Hi, I'm Leo, and if you clicked on this video, you're probably ready to watch a very long deep dive on the TikTok series, Who the F Did I Marry? The original series runs seven hours and 30 minutes, which I didn't even think was legal on TikTok, but apparently you can do that. I, of course, sort of cut it down a little bit so it's not 100 hours long, but we're gonna react to every single part, and I'm going to deep dive into the reactions and what I think happened. It is a crazy series. If you still wanna watch the whole thing, it should be there. Basically what happened was this person got into a relationship with a guy in 2020 and in the space of a year and a half she proceeded to see things unravel and none of them actually made any sense. It's a wild story and I thank the lady for telling it. I don't actually know her name because I don't think she said it throughout the series and she does not say the man's name either. Instead she uses code names or aliases. So just to be respectful I'm not going to say their names either. I am however going to write down what the hell I think is going on because honestly it's like a big web of lies I don't think I can follow it otherwise she also seems to ignore more red flags than I've ever seen any woman ignore in my life she she says it too but that's a lot of ignoring going on and basically we're gonna sit and listen to the story so grab your popcorn today's video is sponsored by tap champs TapChamps, the ultimate loyalty program for gamers. An app that allows users to earn rewards for playing games. With TapChamps, you can continue enjoying your favorite titles such as role games like Raid Shadow Legends, board games like Yahtzee, puzzle games like Merge Restaurant, and casino games like Grand Cash Casino, Coin Dozer, and Carnival Prizes, all while discovering exciting new ones. Plus, you'll earn rewards for playing. You can receive rewards of up to $100, including Amazon vouchers, direct payments, or gift cards to the Apple Store, or Netflix. Stop what you're doing right now and download Tap Champs. It's the perfect way to turn your gaming passion into rewards. Scan the QR code on the screen or download the app from the link in my description and play Tap Champs for free to earn rewards. Thanks, Tap Champs. Grab your whiteboard and let's get going. It's part one of who the fuck did I marry? So I met my ex-husband around March 4th of 2020. I am going to skip through some of the details because every now and again, this lady does say things that in my head, I'm like, why? She says that she's very detailed, which I should write down actually. All right, that's the lady, oh, seven hours, 30 minutes, very detailed. Problem with her details is that she actually seriously talks about every route she takes to get to any place thinking that we need to know this. So now I have a full scale map of Atlanta in my head, even though I've never been there. Thank you, I can drive Uber from the top of my head now. We met on Facebook dating site. It's 12 seconds, I'm gonna stop you there. Facebook dating. No, I don't know what that is. I don't think that's a thing, but no, anyway. Facebook, just in general, no. But like Facebook dating? No. It's not a site for dating. Facebook Marketplace is probably the best thing they have right now. And even that's sketchy. We also matched on Hinge. Let me just write this down. So they matched on two different sites, Facebook dating and Hinge. This is meant to be. As you know, every love story starts. We matched on Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, and Grindr. Yep, everyone. The love story begins, Facebook plus Hinge. They met on two different sites and fell in like. I don't know what else to say. He was on both um, under two different names. So she met this guy on Facebook and Hinge. She's like, oh, he had two different names. And I'm like, okay, fine. But I would think if I saw a girl on two different things and it had different names, but the pictures looked exactly the same, I would think one of two things. That's a scam or that's the same person going by two different names. And already that's that's a little bit concerning, just, just slightly. You know, there's, there might be some explanation, but like, I guess you were attracted enough to him to meet him on both sides and say, yep, so I guess that's pretty good. He told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California, from San Diego. Both of his parents were deceased. His father um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher, um, used to play football. How are we gonna get through seven hours of this if she's already telling us everything? I guess this is all stuff to note, by the way. He moved from California to Georgia and uh, he used to play football. Everything that she's saying does actually matter because this man is, is quite despicable. Let's just, let's just leave it at that right now but you're gonna see how deep this goes explain that he used to play arena football i know nothing about arena football that'll come into play later on. uh yes her saying that'll come into play later on is the perpetual like cliffhanger of every show she should get her own netflix show i feel like if this was on netflix and i watched 10 episodes of who the f did i marry i would be cooked listening to it in vertical while she's driving her car with like subprime audio 
video half the time. Not as good, but if Netflix actually was like, yo, let's give you a deal, I would, I'd support that. Just moved here. My job is paying for my housing and they are helping me to look for a house. We agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory. Basically, she spoke to him the first time and he said that he moved over. His job is basically paying for the re like moving fees and everything. And I think that's a normal thing. It does happen, but I don't know what his job is. All I know is that he played arena football, which to me just sounds like he played football in an arena, which is way better than playing it, I don't know, in your mom's house. I don't know where else. What's the alternative? I think it's good, but I think she's going well. She also says their first date was at the Cheesecake Factory. Contrast that other video last year, it was this whole debacle where the girl was like, you taking me to Cheesecake Factory? This is the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. Who takes someone that looks like this to a chain restaurant? And then she wanted to be driven home. She was like, oh yeah, cheesecake, I love it. She doesn't care. Disclaimer, I hate fucking cheesecake. I don't know what the hell, who decided to put cake and cheese together. That's like having cucumber pizza. Is that a thing? No, and it would never be a thing because even in hell they have standards. I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures. I was like, oh my God, he's actually a attractive. I've seen him, he's not. Oh, I'm sorry, I am so sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Objectively speaking, hell no. Um, I guess, you know, to each their own, it's subjective, but no. He's also six foot four. Oh, you're tall? And I think this wins her over. So this proves another theory. If you're over six foot and a guy, you should be fine with women. <laughs> All right. Fell in love, Facebook, every couple does. That's Shakespearean. Six foot four, look like the pictures, wasn't a catfish. Pretty good so far. He was like, I want to get married, part two. He claims that while he was doing arena football. Okay, so that's part one. He wants to get married. They met at Cheesecake Factory. So far, they're going on the date. Part two continues off where part one left off. <laughs> That's the whole point. The team that he was on won a championship. Okay, I didn't know that they had championships. You know, he got a little offended, like, yeah, they got championships. <laughs> Imagine talking to someone, they're like, I play this sport. And you're like, I didn't know they even played competitively. What? Table tennis? What, do you just get a table and stand on it and then hit the ball? They have championships? Oh my God. You guys play that for money or just for... But is that like... A punishment. She's like acting like it's not even capable that a sport that she hasn't heard of could have a championship. Of course that would offend this guy. He's like flexing his biggest achievement. She's like, oh, ew, people like that? Okay. Damn, I, I feel bad for him and I don't even like this guy. Talked about how I dated at one point in time somebody I worked with. That will come back later. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. Okay, so this is taking place in the early part of 2020. Everyone loves that time. Love blossomed for a lot of people. And then people had to make some tough decisions as to, is this really love or am I just, do I want that booty? Then the place got locked down, which meant, do I want to stay with this guy? Do I want him to stay with me? Or do we stay separately? Now, any rational person would be like, you stay there, I stay here. I don't know how long it'll be till I see you, but just like Shakespeare, if it's meant to be, you will come two and then maybe in me. <clears throat> you know what I mean? But she was like, I've had one to two good dates with you. Why don't you stay with me throughout lockdown? I think that's a bad decision already. Not even in hindsight, but she didn't. Are we going to quarantine at his place? He had like a studio type of situation. I was like, it's like a studio apartment. Why did she do that? Like it was a, it's like a studio apartment. It's like, I think people live in a one bedroom house. Is it possible to even be alive in like that environment? The only thing I know about this woman is that she made him feel bad about his house and his fucking athletic career. God, this dude, so sad. I did not realize inviting him to my home probably made his eyes go, oh shit. She's a keeper. The reason why I hesitate is because I grew up in the church. Okay, we're skipping a little bit here, but basically what happened was she had to figure out whether they were going to be at his apartment or hers. And she's a Christian woman too. So she says that she battled with the idea of like staying with someone before marriage. In the Christian belief, it's like you marry someone, then you move in. It's not you move in, then get married. Just in general belief, within two weeks, you're not moving in with someone unless you're that smitten. She doesn't even seem 
seems smitten even in the story. He paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. Why the fuck would he though? Do you know what I mean? Like I'm still very concerned that it's been two weeks and now he moved into your place and he's paying your bull. Sounds like he's the one getting catfished here, but I'm gonna write that down. Okay, so in a two-week period, lockdown happens. She decides, you come to stay with me. Heard her say it was a three-bedroom house and, like, I guess compared to his studio apartment, there's more space. He is now paying her rent and utilities and everything. She's paying her car payments. It seems to me like this is a good deal. He paid the rent, because my rent at the time was less than $1,000. He paid the utility bills. And so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like... Wow, okay, so you got money. I do like the way she talks, I really do. Every now and again, she makes a facial expression. She says some things that I would love to have on a t-shirt. Oh, you got money. That's a, that's a fucking quotable right there. You got money with three Y's at the end. You got money. Yes. She thinks he has money. You just told me he was staying in a studio apartment. I tell you, regional managers usually wouldn't be living like that. Or if they were, they wouldn't be living in one where you sounded disappointed when you saw it. But did you see the studio apartment? Did you see any of this? There's a little few flags. I feel like when you're dating online, you gotta be a little more hesitant. I get it. I understand. Once you get to a certain age, you're like, oh, all my friends are getting married. This person's having babies. I'm out here. I'm dating arena football man over here. I want to get married very fast. Okay, I get that. But at the same time, it is in your best interest to protect yourself and just play it a bit slower because this is going to be the decision for the rest of your life. Just like, hey, do I know maybe things like his last name, perhaps? Figure some, some stuff out like that, then you can move in with him. I mean, she was like, he got money, so he's gonna move in with me, and then that's, so they're moved in now. He's paying her bills. Subconsciously, she's already given a little of her power away. Not a bad thing. You don't expect everyone to F you over, but like, you know, it's, oof, this is cutting it close. The decision was made, let's start looking for a house for both of us. Oh my God, I just, just, what? You just moved into the So she's moving at the speed of light, clearly. She like watched Toy Story and Buzz Lightyear was like to infinity and beyond. She's like, motherfucker, I can go faster than that. This guy moves into the house and she's like, that's good and well, but I need to have a house for both of us now. So now they're looking at open houses, but they can't even go to the open houses because it hasn't been long enough for a lockdown to end. They're still in lockdown looking for these houses. Why would you buy a house then? Stupid. I don't know. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 and What? What? <laughs> he was approved for 700 and And then it just makes that doom TikTok sound. Damn, these cliffhangers are mighty. That was the end of part two. <laughs> he was approved for 700 and Oh, I have to, I have to meme it. What's up, my n- Part three. This is when he explains to me I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. The loan was 750,000. I have no idea why she cut it off like that. I think she was just being hilarious. She wanted to troll that day. But in part three, he's explaining how that loan came to be because a bank doesn't just look at you and say, you look like you play arena football. Here's some money. You look like you need the money because you play arena football. I still don't know what that is either. But apparently he played it and he got some money. He accumulated some good credit or something to which the bank said, all right, you can take my money. So we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. I really like the house. I don't know much about Georgia, but now I know that the houses look so good and the prices are so low. Oh my gosh, why am I not living in America? For that price over here, you can get a golf trolley, maybe. If you want to live in a bus shelter, maybe it'll cost that much. Right. Well, anyway, they found a place on Zillow and it was listed for 325K. I think it got like four bedrooms or something. Oh my God. So they are looking to buy a house for them too. So far, they've been on a few dates. I've not cut anything that you didn't need to know out. She's not said anything about why they're moving so fast. There's no qualities about him that make her certain that he's the one. If someone asks you, why do you 
you love this person and you need to think about it, maybe you don't love them as much, you know? If you need to think about all the reasons and can't narrow it down, maybe. But she ain't, she never said anything about why she loved this guy. I don't even know anything about this guy. He puts an offer in, he's telling me he put an offer in. I did not know anything at this time about buying a house. Then why are you buying a house? Can you imagine that shit? You get on a plane and the pilot's like, I don't know anything about flying planes, but I was just gonna put in the offer to fly this plane. What? Why did you look up how to buy a house? I'm trying to be on your side here, but like, it's not easy sometimes. The offer was approved and they are going to try to do a virtual closing. Three or four days later, I get a phone call from the, re from the realtor. And the realtor... So this is all moving very fast, but apparently they put in an offer on the house. The house was accepted. But this is all according to the guy. His name is Legion, by the way. Call him Big L. He's the one who puts down the offer. He calls her. He says, I got the house. Everything's good. They're going to do a virtual closing. So once they do that, the house is ours. And she thinks, great. But four days later, she gets a call. And it seems like the house isn't closed yet. Is like, hey... I'm just checking to see, you know, what you guys want to do about that house. Oh, I, I was told that he put an offer in. And the realtor was like, he did? Red flag. And he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor. <sighs> So we needed to get a new stove. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's start with the fact that this woman has not known anything about the process to the fact that she let another man pay the whole deposit and everything and not question. I wanna be clear here. It is lovely to have the thought that like your partner will swoop in and save the day financially from all your problems. But like at some point you gotta take responsibility. I don't even think she has problems. I just think that someone was like, yeah, I can get that house for you. And she was like, okay, do it then. A big daddy. I don't know why I did that. But um, the point is, no. You know, if you're gonna go on a house, like it, maybe if you know someone and your financial situation is a certain way, maybe. Otherwise, it's like, man. So a guy could just say anything and you're like, yeah, well, I don't know. He told me he could buy me a house. So I'm just, I'm just waiting for, to move in. Just gonna wait in to swoop right in the door. So that's already a problem on her part. And then this dude has the absolute bull sex to tell her that he didn't put an offer in with the realtor, did it privately. Does that sound right? Someone's advertising the house and you just call up your homie you're like hey bro i'm gonna buy the house from you instead and your bro is like that that's not even possible but okay even if they were from the same company they might not be operating on the same house come on i'm gonna write that down so they tried to buy first house, but he said he's giving the money to his friend because it's now private sale, realtor, some bullshit. And she didn't break up with him yet, or at least question what the hell that is. With a friend of mine who is a realtor. <sighs> so we needed to get a new stove, um, new refrigerator, new microwave, all that stuff. I went ham. I chose all these new appliances. It doesn't dawn on her that this is a very suspicious activity and she goes back to buying appliances or not buying, choosing them. Again, I feel like a very good theme is to analyze why both parties were wrong. Now, this man is torrid and despicable, but you can't fully always place the blame on him when you're looking at someone who's essentially, she thinks she found a ticket to the chocolate factory right here. She thinks she's gonna meet Willy Wanko, but realistically, like, is that something that that happens where you just meet someone and they take care of all of your stuff. It is a nice thought, but like, wouldn't you rather make sure that you don't depend on anyone in case something like this happens and instead of getting a house, you end up going on a seven hour Uber ride telling your story about how shit got fucked up. Nobody wants that. Sorry, but nobody wants that. Do your research. All right. I watched him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances for them and they were going to hold it until we were ready for delivery. I started recording. I wish that she had played some of the audio diaries, but this is the equivalent of saying like, you know, I've got this and then not showing you the proof. She did record audio diaries. She shows a picture of it, but not actually any of the audio from that time, which I would have loved to have heard because it would have gave insight into what she was thinking at the time. In hindsight, everything is a bit more clear, right? If only I had those diaries. I was shooting myself and then answering. Inspection didn't happen around mid-May, I found out I was pregnant. The story, for a seven hour series, there's a lot of stuff that's happening that I'm just not aware of. I, what happened to the house? What happened to all the appliances that you put a deposit on? She's just skipping through this part. Well, I guess she's pregnant now. All right, Legion's got two baby Legions in her. Hey, it might be twins. <coughs> Struggle. We gotta get the fuck up out of here. I guess they did an inspection. 
He showed me an inspection report. We were set to close the end of May. He told me it was going to be a virtual closing. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual closing? I'm probably like, what the hell is going on really in your life to make any of this even make sense? Because it gets so much worse. But like, this doesn't make sense either. This is, a lot of this is on you. What the hell? Because again, he's saying because of people are not closing in the office. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign. I don't know what it was back then. I feel like everyone needs to be in a place physically, but I, I've seen some electronic deals go down. How's this quite a big sum of money? But okay, so he's saying that. I still don't know about the realtor and I don't know who she's dealing with at this point. Like, cause the person who put it up on Zillow is not the person he is paying the money to. Some big questions here, but I guess she's, she's busy. Cause she's, I guess he distracted her with the kids now that she's having. The paperwork. This is what he's telling me and so he was like we're set to close like just before memorial day for some reason i didn't start packing i anyone that knows me will tell you i hate moving i've done it enough in my life i hate moving yeah as opposed to all of our i love moving i love not having a stable home <laughs> but anyone who knows her will say she doesn't like moving okay all right but i did not start packing up that house at all i was just like you know I'm, my body was pregnant. I can barely keep my eyes open half the day. So she's pregnant, she's tired, she doesn't want to move. They haven't closed the house down. Lots, just lots of questions right now. But we're on to part five. Part five. So I'm pregnant with a lot of anxiety. I was struggle. Probably the Holy Spirit was like, look at that house on realtor.com. The Holy Spirit said that? My Holy Spirit doesn't say shit like that. Hey, have you checked Zillow? And I'm like, oh, who? oh shit, it's the Holy Spirit. Zillow, five bedroom house. You can't afford this. Raffle. Damn, the Holy Spirit hates me. This was around June 5th. It showed that the house was off the market. So it shows the name of the real estate agent i called her part five she notices some huge discrepancy in the damn house the fact is the house actually got sold but her and her partner don't have the house but it's been closed so this is a big sign she looks at the paperwork she looks at the details the numbers on who sold the house and she calls the real estate agent and tries to get some information this is where things get a bit deeper the plot thickens my husband and i were looking at this house at one, two, three Main Street. And we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available? Imagine being on the phone. Is it not available? Jesus, no, sorry. I'm sorry that it's not available. You don't have to do that to me though. I was like, really? And he's gonna say, really? Please stop. The house is never gonna be on the market again. Please, I have ears, ma'am. He wants to pull out. Y'all keep in mind, I am pregnant. I made the Yeah, okay. Well, he wanted to pull out of the house, but he did not want to pull out of her. So she is pregnant, but the house isn't. What I mean by that is that they're not going to be in it. Apparently, this man pulled out of buying the house, didn't tell his partner, and she somehow felt okay with this. Now, let me ask you a question. If you met someone on Facebook, then told him to move into your house, and then he said he's gonna buy you a house, showed you bank statements, and then pulled out of the house without telling you, would you not have a few more questions? Or would you think it's okay because he put possible twins into your belly? Cause I don't know, man. If a lady comes and does that to me, I'm gonna just go back to the fact that I met her on Facebook and think usually bad things come from Facebook. So. Decision, you're about to have a baby with this man? He's paying all the household bills. Let him get out of the lie. And that's okay. So she admits, she admits. And I do appreciate her transparency throughout this whole like story. I'm not trying to like sit here and be like, oh, you woman, why'd you do this? Like I, sometimes I understand, other times I don't. I understand this one. I understand that, okay, I'm pregnant now. Um, I don't understand it. I don't know. But like, I can get it. Like, she's like, okay, I'm gonna carry his kids and don't know what's going on. And so she's like, okay, he lied somewhere, but I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna stick. I get that. I actually do get that. It's not a nice thing. It's not a, a romantic thing, but sometimes it's a real thing. Some people lie, you're like, ah, okay. But she moves past it. And that's what most women in their right mind would have, would have been like, I'm out. The next day I asked him about the house and he said, my friend, the realtor, I'm talking to him 
because something's going on with the interest rate. He was like, I'm backing out of the house and I'm gonna see if I can get my earnest money back. What the hell is earnest money? Okay, so earnest money is money paid when agreed upon a contract and then you can get that money back. So he, he's saying some crazy shit. Stuff that makes sense to people. If you know basic terms like, yeah, okay, the interest rate is a bit high, so I'm gonna get my earnest money back. I'm not gonna make the deposit. He's saying the keywords that make it sound like what he's doing is real. So he's showing her things and saying things, but his actions aren't really lining up. People are going to always be evil. You don't assume someone sucks. You learn about it the hard way. So I, I get it. She's, she's still in that okay phase. And I was standing in the kitchen and I cocked my head to the side and I said, okay, Get your earnest money back. Can you imagine how she actually did it? Okay, get your earnest money back. She probably cocked that shit really hard. I keep looking at this to see how much time I have because you know they only give you 10 minutes. And yet there's seven hours and 30 minutes. How the fuck did you break TikTok, huh? TikTok was looking for a long form series and you, you delivered it. TikTok actually literally data proven, shortened the attention span of the current generation. You decided I'm gonna put seven hours, 30 minutes on there. That's bowler. Respect. Respect. Uh. Mr. had called me and told me that when they did the ultrasound, they did not see a heartbeat. So she was like, this pregnancy is not going to be viable. Oh, shit. Okay, well, in a very sad tone of events, the doctor called them after the ultrasound to say that the kid probably not going to make it. Minor detail here. Would they not, if they have the ultrasound, would they not know then the heartbeats not? Had to wait till she was at work and be like, oh, okay, I don't want to fuck up a day now. While she's at work, then I'm going to actually mess it up. I don't know what kind of doctor would do that, but write this down. So I guess it's very sad. It's a really, t I mean, it's a really, oh man, it's a shitty situation when stuff like that happens. So I'm crying hysterical. It's part six. And that's how part five ends. Part six starts with her finally reaching her destination. I like how she decided to start this off in a car. Like she was like, I'm gonna tell you this long story. Prepare for a long drive to it. it. Really got us in the mode. Now she's in what looks like some sort of yellow house. Like she's in a Simpsons cartoon house thing. And she's starting off with part six. I don't know if that's her house. If that is, yellow is a very bold choice for the wool color. My doctor gave me three options. Let everything happen naturally. You can take a pill, which will induce expelling the fetus. The third option was to go into the hospital and do a DNC. Went out to eat to try to celebrate as best we could. Again, condolences, because I, I don't know how, just, I don't know how, how that would even, but they go out anyway, they eat, they're like, let's keep our spirits up, you know, take a moment to say, well, we did this. And that happened. Took the pill that night. It was the most traumatic, excruciating pain I've ever put my body through. Oh my God. Have you ever watched some of the movies I watch? It's like that. Have you ever watched Love is Blind? Excruciating pain throughout the night. It did not pass. My doctor was like, we're gonna have to do a DNC. My DNC was scheduled for the first week of July. My ex was going to take me two days before my procedure. He tells me he is up for a promotion. So in the worst circumstance possible, she takes the pull. It doesn't fully work. So they actually need to get her into a hospital. They schedule a date and he says, I'm gonna take you there, I'm gonna be there for you. And a few days before he calls and says, I'm up for promotion. Now, we didn't really talk about where he works because from what we know, he plays arena football. He managed to invest his money really well to get a house. However, he doesn't have a house. Little suspicious um he also works at a condiment company so like the simpsons dude he's a big wheel at the cracker factory kind of guy and i'm a superstar at the cracker factory uh at some point uh our main character also says he works or worked at apple three very different choices it's a hell of a career i gotta say he's up to be promoted to VP. Because of this, it was gonna be this huge business meeting he had to go to. Um, the business meeting was scheduled for the day of my surgery. So he offered to have his sister take me to the hospital. So he did not take me to the hospital, my friend did. Okay, so there's a lot, again, a lot going on here. He works at the ketchup company. I don't know how to draw ketchup. That doesn't look like anything. 
and he's gonna be the VIP, VP. Oops, my bad. I'm, he's ketchup company, right? He, he puts sauce onto burgers so well, the president is like, oh, you can sauce up my meat any day you like. That's what happened. Apparently that is happening on the same day she's scheduled to have her thing. And he's like, okay, my vice president won't understand this very intricate and absolutely demanding set of circumstances that any human being would probably excuse. So he offers for his sister to take her because his sister also lives in Atlanta. And she says, no, of course. Cause she's like, I don't know the sister. And eventually she gets her a friend to take her instead of getting anyone from his side of the family. Dr. So-and-so called her fiance and his executive assistant picked up. And the executive assistant said that he was in a business meeting. You know, you could relate to him what you need to say and he'll, you know, tell Mr. He'll tell the fiance. And my doctor was like, hell no, <laughs> HIPAA. Yeah, I guess so they do it. She's fine. The doctor is like, let me call your spouse and tell him. Uh, the guy, he didn't even get the job yet, but he already has now an executive assistant. So this is the guy who probably opens the packets so he can then spread the ketchup onto the burger. I don't know why you would catch up executive, but yeah, someone needs to catch up to the story because this is going nowhere. Hmm. HIPAA, he should have been there within the hour. I should have only been in recovery an hour and a half. Let's go to the next part. Okay, well that was part six. So she did it, it was successful, she's recovering, and this man is now set to come see her. And after recovery, he said he will be there. He didn't take her to the procedure, but he will be there. Uh, supposedly, it looks like he got the job because he got the assistant. Very, very seldom do you not get the job, but keep the assistant, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm rooting for him. Part seven. Subsequently, I ended up being in recovery between three to three and a half hours. He eventually did get to Northside Hospital, go home, he waits on me hand and foot. I recover. He decides that, you know, do you want to start looking for a house? I told him, I said, I don't want to work with your friend who I've never met, never talked to. I know that he has talked to him because he's talked to him in front of me. And I'm going to demonstrate on one of the videos how he used to do his phone calls. I don't know in part seven whether he got the job. My assumption is that he got the VP position because we don't really discuss it more. Why? I don't know. But in part seven, he says, let's look for a house again. She says no, and her reasons are valid. This time, she actually is like, I don't actually know the person you're talking to, which makes sense. But apparently, this man has been talking on the phone, saying things like, yeah, yeah, close the deal. I'm gonna put some ketchup on it. Close the deal. Yeah, seal it with some mustard. All right. Because I'm the VP of the mustard company obviously i guess that's what she's hearing and thinking okay this seems legit more and more we're seeing this man's lies devolve in front of our faces and wondering how a woman can put up with this it is very fair to note that she has had a tough time and a set of circumstances has clouded her vision i think that is very fair to say he is not the first thing on her mind and lies are not the first thing she's thinking it's very conceivable don't worry it's coming but i found a house in smyrna that I absolutely- That's a seven bedroom, five bathroom, 4,800 square foot house for $922,000. You want seven rooms? How many kids? One, two, three. That's four people if you had twin. Oh my God. Are you Rick Ross? Why do you need a house so big? He needs 40 rooms. Whenever he sleeps, he takes up 35 of them. You don't need that. Seven bedrooms is a lot. Oh my God, she got a mansion. We talked about it. He said that he had the money. He said he felt comfortable putting in an all cash offer. You got that kind of money where you can cut a cashier's check for- Okay, I'm gonna break this down. Let me just put up the house here. So now he wants to get this house, which is a seven bedroom. And not only that, he wants to get it in cash. By the way, sorry, my drawings are crude, but not as crude as me. Subscribe. <laughs> An all cash offer is when you pay cash for the house. The last time I heard about that was when Travis Scott bought a house, but that dude makes Astro Wall. So I guess that one checks out. This one, I don't know how much in arena football has been paying, but if he had to pay a deposit on a house that costs less than 750, but then pays all cash when the house costs more? You gotta ask the question, what the fuck? 699,000? I watched him sign 
the offer. Apparently she watched him sign the offer. Now I wish she would go into more detail about stuff like this, cause she doesn't. This is where stuff like that ends. She says she watched him sign papers. She watched him do this. I wish she would say I watched him sign a piece of paper. I watched him sign this by himself or if it was in front of people. This way at least we'd have some inkling into what is going on. Like all these information bits that would probably help. She never expands on that, but we're on to part eight. Oh, he calls us and tells us that the offer was not accepted and the builder did not do a counter offer. He didn't want to finish the basement. The house fell through. I was okay with that. By this point, this is- So the house falls through very fast, but this time it's not really due to the guy, which is kind of a question mark here. They wanted to have a basement done and some other things done to which the builders and people said, no, that's not gonna happen. I don't know why they wouldn't finish a basement on a brand new house. So on both sides here, I'm just equally perplexed to why someone wouldn't accept a cash offer, but I'm also as confused as to whether the guy really was going to try and get this house or not because he offered the money straight up now fall of 2020 um we had been talking about marriage i had my ring um he had made vp at the company he didn't go to work sloppy okay so he did make vp okay okay so we're gonna get to that we're talking about marriage in the fall okay got it all right, two houses have now fallen through for various reasons, but the good news he made VP and they're gonna get married. So that's pretty good. Two things that are more stable, a career and a marriage. Looking at all, but it definitely was not suit and tie. Yeah, he didn't dress like a VP, but his excuse was, I'm constantly walking the production floor. Um, we had found another house that we really liked. Asking price, I believe, was about 700,000. The reason that that house fell. So he's not going to walk like a VP. He's not going to walk in a suit and tie. On one hand, it's like, okay, fair enough. But on the other hand, like, honestly, he could be going in a fucking catch up package just to like get synergy up and people would be like, okay, that's fine. You don't have to look like you're in a suit and tie when everyone else is not working like that way. Sometimes people don't dress like that. So they don't like have the classism in the company. So I can see both ways. That does, That's not a big deal. Through. <sighs> We found out that the home was sitting on a septic tank. Personally, I didn't really care for the house that much. I'm the one who was like, I don't really want it. And then we get to house. Okay, so house three fell through because of a septic tank. Ironically, the house is just as full of shit as her man. All right, so now we have three houses that fell through. That's quite a lot. Uh, I feel like the impatience of someone would actually matter at this point. If you keep, you know, if you keep seeing this stuff happen, houses falling through, you get your hopes up, your hopes get cut down. At some point, you have to wither your expectations and you get to a point where you get desensitized to the stuff. It doesn't seem like any of the stuff is necessarily his fault though. House number three. Now I need to introduce what happened with the cars. Part nine. So when I met my ex-husband, I was driving a 2012 Nissan. Okay, so we're taking a break from the houses to move on to the cars. Uh, and I guess that's part nine. And I was driving a 2012 Nissan Rogue. When he told me how he was a regional manager, he told me that one of the perks that came with the job was that he would be getting a company car. What is the perks of being a VP? Because the perks of a regional manager is that they actually help him move into a new house and give him a company car. That's a regional manager. A VP must be, they give him all the money for a new house and he gets a Tesla and also a helicopter. If you're putting the pieces together, you're like, okay, you said that your company is gonna give you money to like, go to a certain house or at least give you some sort of finances towards a house, but we haven't got that done. So the finances are just sitting there. Also a company car, which he hasn't got either. So there's now more questions than there are answers. And it's like, What's happening, bro? We spent time going to Range Rover. We spent time going to Jaguar. Basically what I'm hearing, it's the reason why I think she fell for all of this. It's kind of like the Tinder swindler thing, except on the Tinder swindler, I've seen the guy and he looks possible. This one, I'm like, why? But basically now she's under the guise of this man is going to buy her a new 
car. I understand. I understand the flattery that comes with, okay, I'm your partner, I'm gonna take care of you. Maybe it's just me, and maybe I'm the worst person for thinking this, but I'd rather 50-50, or at least like, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. Not I'll scratch, rub your back, lick your tata, just everything, and then you just, all you do is pay your own car payments. Even that you're not gonna do now. You gotta ask yourself, what can I do for someone, not what can they do for me? That's what I keep saying. This man is now offering to buy her a car because of the company money, and she's just gonna accept it willingly. He called the person in the finance department for his job. He says, um, yeah, the, the price of the car is blah, blah, blah. He was like, give me a second and I can send you a picture of that printout. He says, did you get it? Apparently the person did get it. But the person who can who can actually physically do the wire transfer had gone home for the day. So he goes to a company, he looks at cars, and the cars are not to his liking till he finds a BMW he really likes. He asks for the printout so he can send it to the people, his company, and apparently the person who does the wire transfers is not there. Very sad. But he'll be there on Monday. So they're holding the car for him rushes back over, gives it to my ex-husband. My ex-husband's like, okay, first thing in the morning, we will get this wired over and then you know, I'll come and pick up the car. My fiance, me, will drive me up here to pick up the car. I wanted a dark blue BMW with cognac interior. I wanted an X5 and I wanted an M series. So I don't know why any of this happens, but like I said, he offers to buy her a car with the money. And this is exactly what she wants. New car, woo! X5, Cognac, and tenure. BMW, X5, M Series, Sports Series, drive right into the hearts of your enemies type car. What were you driving before? A Nissan Rogue. How are you gonna make this big level up in life? You're just suddenly level up in life? I met a guy on Facebook plus him. <sighs> Oh, you're gonna base all of your financial decisions and everything about your life improving financially based on a guy you met on Facebook and Hinge. It seems like your Delulu is hinging on Facebook right now. I'm gonna send her this after just so she understands the amount of fucking weight she's putting on the hopes and dreams of this guy coming through for her with all of the stuff that she wants. X5 with cognac interior doesn't just grow on trees, lady. Why would you do this? I'm trying to help you, oh. He told my family he was buying me a new car. He had met my family initially on Zoom. This is like a lady going to Santa Claus, sitting on his lap and being like, get me X5 Pontiac Interior BMW. And then the Santa's like, okay, little girl. And then you see him say yes to like 400 other people and none of their dreams come true. That's why Santa Claus is hilarious. All of these kids are like, can you put my family back together? No, little girl, I can't fix the big issues your family got when they married each other. Those marital problems are beyond my pay grade and I don't get paid. Bitch, Merry Christmas. Here's another red flag. He would always talk about money and he would always brag. I told him, I was like, pick one between the BMW and the Audi because you said you buying it. So he's bragging about money. She thinks it's a red flag. It's not a red flag to brag about money. It's a red flag to brag about money you don't have. Floyd Mayweather bragging about money is not a red flag. That's just, oh, that's Floyd Mayweather. That's the guy who punches people and gets paid. This guy bragging about money and you haven't seen it. You also haven't seen him come through for anything besides the rent. I don't know. But apparently, even though she wants an X5 with a cognac interior, fucking M Sport, she's now getting an Audi because he's gonna buy her an Audi. So he goes to the Audi dealership and he does the same thing. He gets the paperwork, but this time the car goes through. And he says that the car will be delivered on a certain day and that she has to be home for the car. So this man shows the Audi. He calls the bank or he calls his financial advisor who does have a name. The financial advisor's name is Eric. I feel comfortable using certain people's names, especially if we find out they didn't exist. He called me at work the next day to tell me that the money was sent 
to Audi. Okay, so there's like a little insight into like the little laugh that she gives. She's like, especially. I can, I feel okay using fake people's names. And she said, Eric is fake. You're a fake and a fraud. Now, I don't know how he's been doing these phone calls, but apparently he's having all these phone calls. He's the vice president of ketchup. That's pretty good. He's got to have a few big tomatoes on his side is what I'm saying. So he's got that new Audi for her. He's got the Audi R8 or something like supercar that he's giving her and she will get to pick it up. Oh, she doesn't get to pick it up. They deliver it to her. That's sick. He told me the car would be delivered between hours of one and three. <sighs> Obviously between one and three, nothing happened. Okay. One and three comes, car's not. Big issue because now we realize house wee, fell through, house wee, fell through, house wee. fell through, car fell through, car fell through. <sighs> Bragging about money, offered to pay house in cash. Cash seems to be an issue. What is getting paid is the rent. So little bit of a discrepancy here. She's got, uh, she's got to face a tough choice. Do I want to actually know? Or her decision, which is I'm going to let him pay the rent and just let him mind fuck me for years to come. Which is the one that you want? Do you want peace mentally and maybe have to pay your own rent or he pays your rent and your insides are just falling apart mentally? He calls me back and says, yeah, the car was stuck on the truck. I, on one hand, I believed him. And on the other hand, I was like, let me see what lie he come up with. The car was stuck on the truck. Sounds like a rhyme Eminem would come up with when you asked him why you didn't deliver his Audi. Car was stuck on the truck. Audi, the Audi dealership that you're paying thousands of dollars to gives you a date and then says, my bad, we forgot. Car was stuck on the truck. Okay, so at this point she says she's gonna see what lies he comes up with. And I wish that like that was the full and true thing. Like I know that on some level, there's probably like a thing to see how far it goes, but this is at the expense of your own life. So I don't know if this is really a good decision, but she makes it. I believe that my ex-husband is the type of person he gets off, uh, you know, okay. he okay. gets off. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Uh. He gets off. Uh. Uh, yeah, her, her, one of her earliest theories, which I don't even disagree with, I think maybe she has some validity too, is that he gets off to knowing that people get rises out of stuff he says and that they will never get delivered. I don't know if that's necessarily his intent, but she's sort of noticing a pattern. Her expectations go up, he makes an excuse, they go down, and maybe he's getting a net from that. He gets off on you being excited about something that he knows you will never get. It is the level of cruelty that I still cannot comprehend. Do you know what really a level of cruelty? Someone who's jacked standing outside of gym eating a McDonald's burger while a fat man runs on a treadmill inside looking directly at him. That's cruelty. This seems to be some sort of lying thing that we're going to figure out. He's apparently the main character in The Lion King, because he's he's lying. You get it? Part 11. But we're on to part 11. Not only is she living in The Simpsons house, but she's cosplaying as a Simpsons character, because she just seems to really love yellow. I don't know where exactly she is. She, she's also wearing a beanie as if she's going to be in the most friendly rap battle of all time. You fucking fat. Your mama told me you need a smack. I support it, but part 11, his family background, yes. Thank you for actually adding the titles now as to what's happening. My ex-husband's parents, mom and dad, are both deceased. Mom passed away from cancer. Dad, I'm not sure what he passed away from. The brother that lived in Philly, I have never talk to him i would always talk to him through my ex-husband okay so she's explaining the family background just a short like thing parents uh his mom was a teacher dad retired police officer both of them passed away his brothers he has three of them because he's one of four his older brother uh and i i think two or three others i think she'll tell you and he also has two sisters so it's a pretty big family starting around july after the grandmother passed away he would talk to john every morning. We both would be getting ready for work and he would be on the phone with John. They would be talking for 30, 40 minutes. I was like, absolutely, I'll go meet your sister. Like, that'd be great. On our way, apparently he got a phone call. The phone was always like on vibrate, but he got a phone call and he told me that something came up. And so she's she had to cancel 
the barbecue, the get together, whatever. So in a few instances, she actually was going to meet the family members. Cause I mean, she's got the ring, which she didn't talk about just by the way, who bought it, etc. Still sort of questions on that. I don't know if they got married or not yet. I'm still waiting to hear on that one, okay. but it's conceivable they should meet the family. She hasn't actually met the family. She sort of talked to some of them, but he said, let me, you know, the sister who was gonna take you to the, the doctor, let me introduce you. And on multiple occasions, something has come up. So they didn't get to meet the sister. So she's like, all right, nobody would lie about that. And so I was just like, oh man, you know, okay. Well, hopefully we can go another time. Three weeks later, he called me and told me his uncle had passed away from COVID. The uncle had tested positive, had to go into the hospital and he died. It was um, a bit of a red flag. Dang, what? <laughs> That's a red flag. His uncle died. I was like, whoo. Mm -mm. I don't know about that. Your know, uncle dying sounds like a fucking made up story to me, bro. Uncle dying. Sounds like you lying, bitch. He's alive and well. I can tell. So now I'm gonna give you the backstory in regards to what I was told with the ex-wife. I know I look rough. So part 12, she's still, I guess she came back from the rap battle or something. We're now going to hear about the ex-wife because that is something that's part of the lore. The reason he moved from California to Georgia, Atlanta, is because him and his ex-wife had a pretty bad relationship. She cheated and he didn't want to be there anymore. So he moved to a different state because she cheated and he's, he hated that. But she also has kids, but not with him. And he loves the kids. This is important. I was told that he and his ex-wife used to be friends. <laughs> I would fucking hope so. I was told that him and his wife used to like each other. Uh, apparently he liked her enough to put a ring on it. I'm told that he even said at one point, and this is true, I love you to her. I don't know what kind of animal would do that, but apparently he did. Then they started dating and subsequently got married. Came home early from work one day and his wife was sleeping with another man. So the story goes that he and the guy fought. He kicked the guy out. He kicked his ex-wife out, but told her the kids could stay. Okay, so he comes home early from his catch up or, or maybe even his indoor football or whatever the hell days. I'm assuming it's the catch up days. So he's got like mustard on his shirt. He's got mustard mustache. He comes home and you know, she's she's with the mailman or something. So he kicks her out. He kicks everyone out. He's like, the kids can stay. Everyone else goes away. He files for a divorce in California. It was an ugly divorce. She was asking for spousal support, all kinds of stuff. So eventually about two years later is when his job approached him about an opportunity to transfer to Georgia. Oh, okay. All right. So it took him two years. I thought as soon as he kicked her out, he moved, but he was still there for two years by himself. Then a job opportunity arose back in Georgia. And he said, yeah, I don't want to be around this scene anymore. I don't want to be in the same house. I, I gotta be honest, don't cheat. But if you're going to, don't do it in like your bed. Do it in their bed. Like, don't fuck up your bed. And you gotta sleep in that bed. The other person gotta sleep. That's crazy. Don't be lazy. Around April or May of 2020, he informs me that his ex-wife has moved to Georgia. He's never presented that she was trying to get him back. I mean, this is not a little fishy that she would move to Georgia as well. Like, I think he says that she has family in Georgia and stuff. Is that not just a little bit like fishy that out of all of the 50 states in America, she goes from California to Georgia. Like that's going from West Coast to East Coast, if I'm not mistaken. It's not in the same region. Like, I mean, it's kind of crazy that she's just going to exactly the same place he's going. I'm just saying like, you know, I have a few more questions as to why she picked such a uh, specific place. So remember, met her in California, married her in California, divorced her in California. Just like California's national anthem. California, you fall in love here, you fuck it up here. Okay. If you get married here, you get divorced here. California, don't take that love elsewhere. If love starts in California, it ends in California. We take 50% of your spouse and taxes. Part 13, the biggest mistake I made was that I signed myself up for a car. Part 13, the biggest mistake you made was going on Facebook looking for love. You can't find love in the same place you can get lawn mowers for sale. That's like going to the phone book looking for answers, okay? You might find a number, but not the number of your song. You're finding love on the same place that my grandma is finding out what memes are. 
Do you see what the problem is? That's your biggest mistake. Facebook. Carry on. This mistake I made was that I signed myself up for a, a car note where I knew I needed his help to pay the car note. I knew better. My mom has always taught me do not ever put yourself in a position where you were financially dependent on a man. I truly... You're letting him pay your house bills and you're letting him pay buy a house for and a car do you listen to anything your mom said oh my god i truly ended up marrying him more out of fear than anything else okay so i guess in part 13 she did get married okay weird way to announce that but let's So she married him, but she says out of fear, which is really sad to be honest with you But I guess they did eventually get married, which is something to note. That's that's pretty important And I'll, I'll expound in October We looked at another house. So she's gonna expound on the situation and They're looking at another house. It's house number four. Absolutely gorgeous um, It was gorgeous. I watched him put an all-cash offer in on the house. Okay, I don't really still understand what that means. Like, he must have signed a paper or something, unless he just went to the house, took out some money, and then did this at the house, and maybe that happened, I don't know. But um, they're on house number four, and I looked at the thing, she, she took out the price, but it says six bedrooms, five bathrooms. Why? Why are you getting mansions? But anyway, they're on house number four. They are asking that you do that you show proof of funds so that they can accept the offer. Okay, so this time, no septic tank, no basement issues, old cash offer goes through. Everything's good. They're actually going to get it, but they just need proof of funds. I need to feel you, Jerry! Show me the money! Jerry, you better yell! Show me the money! Because if I go to a house and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna buy this Jeeves, they're probably gonna ask to see proof. So they're just asking a legitimate question. But for some reason, this guy gets defensive. My ex-husband said, I will show proof of funds when they accept the offer. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Have you ever heard of this before? And I've had plenty of people who said I side with the ex-husband. No, I don't know who the hell would side with the ex-husband. I don't even think that's legal to be like, yeah, sell me the house first, then I'll pay you the money. Yeah. Just let me live in it first, then I'll pay you the money. Has that ever been a thing for anyone? I don't know if it's like that in other countries, but even renting, people have to take a look at your finances for at least three months to make sure if you're paying for a house, you can afford to pay for it. That's just financial security. And then I had other people who were like, I wouldn't accept an all cash offer unless I verify that the person can pay. He refused to budge. But you just signed an offer, so what's the problem? You, exactly, exactly. Exactly. You even know that. You're just like, you saw, You said you're gonna pay. What would be the problem? If he has nothing to hide, he has the money right there because he's gonna give it anyway. At this point, she doesn't have the kid with him. Yes, she's married and I don't know why she did it, but it's not the hottest thing in the world to get divorced, okay? So she's not having anything huge tying her down. This is a big red flag, lady. This is a big red flag. So subsequently, the house fell through. Oh. Also at this point, our real estate agent, Scott, and I do not blame him for this, pretty much cut all ties. Because what he, I believe, felt like was, I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. Part 14. I yeah, before we get to part 14, Scott, the real estate guy who was very patient with him, cut ties because he didn't understand the circumstances. He was like, hey, things keep happening. I don't get why they do. And until I can actually see change, I'm not going to be a part of this. Scott has a healthier mindset in relationships than this Simpsons looking rap battle character over here. I don't know why you're still sticking with this guy. You just lost four houses and the fourth one was because he didn't want to show proof that he could pay the house. Clearly, money is an issue. Money is the issue. And I mean that in so many ways. Money is the issue because he doesn't seem to have it or is lying about it. Money is also the issue because she wants it and wants someone to take care of her. And because he's doing it, she's letting him slide for so many things. In her eyes, money is the thing that is blinding her from actually seeing the truth. And also, money is the thing that is keeping him from actually leaving her house. He's the lie of his money. The guise of his money is keeping him around. She should know better, but I understand. A lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that number one, I didn't want to be alone. 
Number two, I didn't want to look stupid um, by having the relationship end so quickly for everyone to be like, we told you something was up. Um, And number three, I was ready to get married. And the part that- I have to break this down, guys. Number one, I didn't want to be alone. This is my best advice for being alone. Do it, experience it, love it. Because life is a singular experience, whether you like it or not, it is that. It's just a very beautiful added bonus and absolute God-given beautiful thing. When you just fall in love, it's like the best thing ever and it will happen. But it probably won't happen as nicely if you're not okay with yourself. Because if you're not okay with yourself, you're gonna look for someone to fill in the void that you have. If you're complete, then you can allow for someone to be in your life and enrich their life. Too. If you're scared to be alone, learn to like it. Because once you do, then someone's gonna be like, now that you like it, I'm taking that away from you. Then you'll be forever in a relationship. Two, you didn't want other people to judge you. Very valid feeling. Everyone feels like they're getting judged by people. But as I've come to learn, people don't have as much off a say in your life. And if you can learn to shut that out, then it's fine. And what three, you wanna be married. Hey, I want to be married too. However, no ring. It, it'll come when it comes. That's what she said. <laughs> but seriously, no, it, it'll happen. You just gotta be as good to yourself as you can be so someone else can see that you're great to yourself and being good to you as well. This man clearly is seeing some holes in you and he's very enticing because you're seeing things that he can do for you and you're not respecting yourself by letting him walk all over you. That's, that's the issue. Kept me constantly second guessing myself was, what if he's not lying? But he is, but but you know, but you know, but you know. He, how could he not be though, you know? Ask him, how could he not be? There's no, literally the conversation I had with myself was there's no way he is lying about having money. He's having conversations about move the money from this account to that account. I forgot to tell you, apparently he has an offshore account, but not a house or a car that works. Well. I'm just saying, man, like if make it make sense. And if it doesn't make sense, leave. I haven't had to worry financially since I've met him. And as a woman who had lived on her own, paying her own bills, my God, that is the most intoxicating feeling when you meet a guy who just takes your stress and your worry away financially. But that shouldn't be a thing. Though. Maybe a popular, unpopular opinion. It shouldn't be a thing where that is what the guy is for. I'm gonna take your financial stress away. You can just continue to have stress otherwise. It's not like, oh, it's only my issue. It's still, okay, it's ours, but not, okay, now I'm gonna take all your issues away. You take my instability away will work this out like by and large generally speaking i don't subscribe to that notion because i feel like then those problems still arise if that person happens to leave and stuff it leaves a pretty big hole in your life if you're gonna have to constantly find guys to do that instead of doing it for yourself i, I don't know if that's really a great idea he showed me his checking he showed me he showed me one of his savings he showed me a chase savings he did not show me the offshore and he did not show me the U.S. bank. Okay, so he has like five bank accounts, you're saying. And we're struggling to buy houses that cost under a mil. If you have five bank accounts and, you know, they're not equaling to a million dollars, I don't think you should have five bank accounts because that's a lot to have, firstly. But offshore accounts and all that stuff that the big boys do, not people down at the cracker factory. Offshore account and he was regional manager. He just made VP. What does the VP make? Two billion dollars a year? Is he, does he order all the catch up in the, in the country? No. What's happening? Damn. I don't know, man. I don't know. It feels like weird, but she snoops around. She's like, hey, can you show me the bank accounts? And he does. He shows her bank accounts. So now her mind is even more confused because she's seeing money in the bank accounts. How is this happening? He showed me those two accounts, checking and chase savings. So I knew that there was money. What I saw in those accounts, there was money. That is when we then had the discussion about marriage and that is where religion came into play part 15 y'all y'all even need i don't know if they got married or she's just said in the future they get married but apparently they're talking about marriage but he checks out the money is in the accounts she doesn't say how much but i guess it's enough to make her not question everything that's happened to get married or y'all need to separate i believe i loved him i believe he loved me 
Nobody should answer a question like they're under oath speaking at court. I believed I loved him. Your Honor, it was my intention to love him. And at some point, I believed it was indeed the truth. Yes, I can say with 20% certainty, I might have maybe one day loved him for a small period of time. He had money, Your Honor. So the decision was made that we were going to get married. I did a background check after I had filed a marriage license. Yes, I know, but I did. The background check, it was uh it was it was like no results found. So I thought one of two things. Either I had the wrong social. Is that a thing that you should do for someone? Like, I, I actually want to know in the comments. Do you think it's a bad thing to, like, ask your partner before you, like, get fully committed to do a background check? Because if someone has nothing to hide, they'll be like, yeah, all right. Might seem a bit intrusive, but I can see where you're coming from. Like, if someone genuinely asked to do that for me, I'd be like, yeah, I was be like, yeah go ahead. Whatever. Is it a bad thing? I get that it's pretty uncommon, but like, doesn't seem like the worst logical idea that I've ever heard in my life. Not sexy in any way, but I get it. Kind of like having a prenup, right? In case you mess up, I'm gonna take my stuff. So don't mess up. I see the purpose. My aunt was more like, really? You married him? My friend, the one who took me to the hospital for the miscarriage, was like, I wish you would have told me, like, you deserve to have people there take pictures and celebrate and all this other stuff. She also then proceeds to say they did get married and it was during lockdown, so they couldn't have many people at the wedding. And everyone was kind of a bit upset because they sort of, like, wanted to see her you know, succeed and everything. And in hindsight, it was good, kind of really good that they didn't have this big wedding because of all the stuff that we're going to learn later. So praise to the most high, right? I think she would agree that it didn't happen for a reason the way that she thought it was gonna happen. Cause I'm sure she'll get her great wedding someday. I got married January 5th. By January 31st, I knew I was in trouble. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. She got married Jan 5th, 2021. By January 30th, 2021, she knew she was in trouble. It took all of 25 days for this man to absolutely catapult her marriage from beautiful to, oh my God, this is a absolute horrific mess. The normal things that married newlyweds do when we got married completely stopped. She, I'm gonna just say it. They're not fucking. Say what? The, once you get married to your wife, ideally you take her to Flavor Town, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but apparently he wasn't taking to Flavor Town. The ketchup was only going on the burgers. The interlude. So now we move on to part 16. Woo! And this is an interlude, sort of like just she answers some questions. Nothing major here. Just a little breather before we go into the other 34 parts left. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? I'm feeling a warm spot. Someone was like, why are you airing your business out on social media? It's a valid question. For me personally, I feel like this was traumatic to experience, to live through. It was traumatic. I mean, the only thing from part 16 I think I can take is that I also was initially like, why do you just want the attention, this, that? And uh, she basically says it was a vent and she needed to get this out. She also does say that if her story could help someone else, even just one person, then she would have done a job. And honestly, I think that this story is worth putting out. I think that it's worth listening to and worth examining. I really appreciate, and I, I'll say that at the end as well. I appreciate her taking, having the courage to do this whole thing. And it doesn't seem like she's mulking it. She's just very deep detailed in the way that she tells things. So I, I agree. I think that's absolutely fine and people are here listening. So yeah. Part 17. Part 17. So his name is Legion. What was totally acceptable before, suddenly little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? You'll be home by five, right? Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm gonna be home. Basically, part 17 starts off with him actually starting to get insecure after getting married, which is the worst time, honestly. But he's now like, okay, you're coming home oddly late. You said you'd be home at 3.30. It's 3.32. Like, what were you doing for two minutes? Could you explain? And that's kind of how he's talking. Apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was like, I think- Another house. You gotta be kidding me. House number five. Like that um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm gonna bring you out here so you can see it. His job was only locked down for maybe a week. Um, for me, I was allowed to work from home, but unfortunately I, I did not handle it well. And so I would fall asleep and not check email. So my boss was like, yeah, you're gonna have to come back to the office because you're not trustworthy. Legion would, he started to not come home by four o'clock. 
She's admitting falling asleep, not being able to do work, watching Netflix and shit. What the hell, man? This is why people can't have nice things. Every time you're on lockdown, people start admitting things like, yeah, I was just jagging off. No, not to work. To what? No, I'm watching dirty movies. I was not. That's crazy. But yeah, no, I, did, I was not working. Liar. He started to come home 5, 5.30, 6. 6.30 sometimes. Okay, so Legion's found another house. This time, this is a crazy thing, is that he's not even showing her the house. He just found a house. He said, I think you'll like it. And he's going off to work to see the house. I don't know why he needs to see the house more than once and not take his spouse to the house. I don't get it. But apparently he's doing that. She's back at work instead of being at home. Things are starting to fall apart in their marriage. Now we're moving into February. February obviously is my birthday month. There's two things I know. February sometimes has 29 days and it's always her birthday in February. These two things I know. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, he did good. He did good to make Valentine. He went all out for Valentine's Day. He did good this birthday. That's good. He went, y'all ain't even gonna believe this story. She had to cut like 15 minutes out of the story here. He basically said her ex pulled up because he was at home, she was at work. And he said her ex pulled up to the driveway asking for her. And he was in a certain car and stuff. And he basically just called her and said this. And now it's like making her confused as to who would do this, why her ex would do this, and why he would be driving that. And she sort of knows details that would mitigate the story and actually negate all of the stuff that he's saying. He was like, why does it matter? I said, what the fuck does he look like? So Legion proceeds to give me the most generic description you can give. He was like, well, um, and so he was like, I know that, that I know it was your ex. I know it was He's a human being. That's all. I don't see color, race, eyes, color, face, mask. I don't see anything. I don't even see the point. All I know is he's a human being and he's being human. Can you seriously just tell me what this guy is actually looking like? At the time I had a security system. The front door was opened and it was shut all within the same minute. So for example, if it says front door open at 1 p.m., front door closed at 1 p.m. So whatever he did was within those 60 seconds. What he didn't know was that she had security cameras as well as her neighbor's security camera that points towards her driveway as well. In her own security thing, it says that the garage is closed one minute after being opened, which means he couldn't have had a very long conversation with this guy, but he said he had a long conversation. So there's lies already there. Furthermore, she does look at the footage from her neighbor's camera didn't have a ring door camera but my neighbor did can you look at your security system and see if there was a car that came to my house she texted me back and said hey i looked at the camera but i didn't see anything something in me again um was like nobody came to the house and then i and then something said to me something in me said he wanted to see your reaction but this man gaslit me like i was georgia natural gas he gaslit you like you were a fart and he was a lighter that's unbelievable i'm gonna write that down She said at the end, her conclusion was he just wanted to see her reaction. And if all he did was gaslight her for no other purpose than to see her reaction, at this point, would it not occur to you that you have a something wrong with their brain pot? Because if someone calls you and their only intent is to make your day worse and they're your spouse of all things, not your enemy, not some person who you've done wrong to, not some random person trolling for views on the internet, Internet. Your husband, the person that says, I'm going to take care of you in sickness and in health, in fatness and in skinniness, whatever the vows are, gaslit for no reason. Your birthday's on whatever February, a few days later, gonna gaslight you just cause. I would divorce him just cause. And I don't know why she didn't. There is still halfway left and then some. Let's move on to part 20. Cool, part 20. Who the F did I marry? Great. Did, did I ever show you where my grandmother's buried? This is the grandmother that passed away from... Mmm, after a nice date and dinner. Did I ever show you where my grandma buried? You know what would make this dinner really nice? My dead grandma. Bruh. I'm gonna show you where she's buried. She used to like this place that we eat at. Now she's dead, but I'm gonna show you that to prove to you she is indeed 
dead. Then we can have sex. And so he was like, my grandfather and my grandmother are buried there. Fuck it, it's a two for one special. My grandma's there, but guess who's on top of her? Still, my granddad. Favorite position is what they were buried in. They're head to toe, 69 and he's not a necrophiliac if they're both dead. All right, anyway, back to our date. What a random thing to say. I don't know if that's a red flag. Do you ever have like a flag color for random? We need a turquoise flag, really. She wanted to be buried next to his grandfather. So we get on the highway. If you're from Atlanta, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't need to be from Atlanta to know what a highway is. Even not in Atlanta, I can tell you, lady, they have highways. You're not the only place in the world with highways. But I keep saying the amount of times, the amount of things that I cut out where she's like, you take the 304 to the 306, then you take a turn off Belgrave, then you put it in drive. <sighs> It's like all this extra stuff to tell a story and it's like you don't have to tell me every single turn you made please he said the building behind it my job bought that building he was like that's where i keep the company car i said aren't you supposed to be bringing a company car home and he was like i don't want to bring the company car home because it's clayton county and it's a ninety thousand dollar car no nah, i don't want no problems i barely could see what building he's talking about in between showing the dead grandma which i guess he just showed her graveyard and said in there he then said behind that is the place where I work or some some shit like this is part of my building. He said there, he parked the car there. He parked the car at the building. It doesn't make any sense. And let me let me draw this up on the board for you guys. Imagine someone has a company car and they don't take that car out of the company. Is that not just public transportation for the company at this point? Because he's not driving from home to his company with that car. He's driving with his car. Then when he's at the company, he drives that car. I'm gonna put a big question box here. 90K car. Oh, that's a question mark. All right. I don't understand how someone, you'd have to drive a car to then get into another car. That doesn't make any sense. Also, if it's a company car and it gets stolen in Clayton County, the company would have to insure it, not you. So either way, that's a lie. So at this point, like lady, come on, come on. Logically speaking, that's a lie. So I said to him, take me to your office. I know it's a Saturday, but shit. He was like, I can. Hey, Willie, it's Legion. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. Hey, is the building open? So in a good move, our protagonist is like, hey, you keep talking about your building. You keep talking about this car. I want to see it. I want to know where that thing is. And he's like, okay. And he calls up the security, but it turns out nobody's on duty. Nobody can open the premise for him because it's a Saturday. Now I just want to take my wife up there so she can see it and see my office. Are you up there right now? You're not? So is there anybody up there that can physically open the building? Because I don't think my badge is going to get me at least in the front door because of it's, it's on the weekend lock. Y'all see how I did that? Okay, so if a man's talking like that, does that not sound even comical? Hello, Martin. You said what? Oh, you said you don't know me? What? What? Honey, you're never going to believe what happened. Really? Really? This guy's talking like people on a kid's show. He's talking like people do on Sesame Street when there's no one on the other end. Don't believe that. Don't believe these lies. Look at how many there is. There's still half a book left. I mean, come on. Never saw the office that. Part 21. Okay, so part 21, continuation. He's saying that he drives from Riverdale to Midtown, switches out cars, and then drives from Midtown to Duluth. Why though? Do you know what I mean? This is like people switching buses because they want to instead of have to when they take transport. Have you ever heard of someone going between two trains because it's more fun? That is crazy. I mean, how are you going to believe all of this gaslighting? That's crazy, lady. We are now in the beginning of March. This is something personal about me. The only way you would know this is if you know me. Oh my God. She has a penis. <laughs> is this, what is, what, is that what? What is it? I have been dying. Oh my dying. God. Holy shit. I'm so sorry. I thought it was the pain. You're dying. I'm so sorry. Dying to go to London and Paris. And she had the nerve to say anybody who knows me knows this about me as if you ask a regular person, would you like to travel? Hell no. I like staying in my house. I don't ever want to leave. My favorite place to go is the toilet. At least I get some peace and quiet there. I don't even, I've never been to Paris. I don't know if I've ever even wanted to go, but I still want to go. You can throw a rock at a rock and find someone who fucking wants to go to Paris. Come on. 
I had a layover in London when I did a study abroad, but it's not the same. Well, obviously. I read about Amsterdam, so I guess I might as well be there. <laughs> I want to go to London and be a whole tour. I want to see Buckingham Palace. I want to see the Tower of London. I want to see- I think she's leading up to something here. I really do. But in essence, what happened with the last thing is that they called security and security couldn't let them in because Wooly wasn't available. So another lie has been told. And I don't know if you're counting, but I, I got at least 10 here. And I don't know how long you'd be able to stick with someone knowing that every single time they say anything, it falls through. Even if it was the truth, I would still be like, no, this is too much for my little old heart. I can't do this. But what she's about to say is even more heartbreaking. This poor lady keeps getting her hopes up because this guy promises her things that cost a lot of money and then doesn't deliver. And I feel very sorry for her, but at the same time i'm like lady this keeps happening and you keep falling for it every time what am i supposed to do this is something if you know me you know she wants to see paris she wants to see london so i get home from work and on the counter is a folder with like a little bow on and i'm like oh what is this is this like mail like yes the postman was like i feel extra special today i wrapped it up it's actually <laughs> how much debt you'd incurred and the taxes that you owe but at least i put a bow on that shit ta-da you owe me money. Like, huh. God. Like mail? Like, was this something that you got at work? He's like, nah, it's a surprise for you. I open up the folder. Inside the folder is like a trip itinerary. It is not an actual booked trip. It's it, it's like an itinerary. A trip for two to go from Atlanta to London. This man brought a brochure. Is that what you're saying? It sounds like that's what you're saying. You just said it wasn't booked. He brought one of those things that says, sail cruise, 3,499, seven nights in Caribbean sea. And he wrapped it up, huh? You better, you better kick this man. You better leave this man. Kick him out, kick him out. He ain't right. He was like, I've already made a reservation for us to stay at the Savoy. And so I remember going to look it up because I was like, what is the Savoy? Well, apparently the Savoy is bougie. <laughs> bougie? Merci, bougie, Savoy, ou me? Well, the Savoy apparently ranges cheapest room 600 pounds a night. And I'll tell you what, you better be getting pounded 600 times for that price. I don't think a man who can't afford nothing so far is going to take you to the Savoy because I don't think he's correct. I think he's lying. You better check that out. I mean, you wouldn't accept that from a mailman. Why would you accept that from a husband? If the mailman says I'm going to come on Sunday and doesn't three Sundays in a row, he's fired. Fire your husband. Please don't fall for this shit. Every time something goes wrong, this man distracts you by throwing some sort of monetary or dreams thing in your face that makes you forget about the past incident. And there are so many of them. You don't have a house. Why are you going on holiday? So excited. <laughs> Yeah, she keeps talking. I mean, there's a lot of this. Blah, blah, black sheep, yeah, have you any yeah, wool? That's the Something one. must have happened, and I don't remember what it was. We just simply didn't fill out the application for the passport. And that's how that ended. That's, that's, that's the very short story of that. Let me write that down. That's how it ended. France, bougie? It's not happening. Uh, I don't know how to do the Eiffel Tower. What's the Eiffel Tower? France plans thwarted by no passport filling out by apparently both of them. They just forgot. Imagine being so intent on going on a holiday and then forgetting to do your passport. That sounds like a load of bullshit. Oh my gosh. 22, he was in the shower. Okay, so we're on to about 22. Woo, almost up for you. Keep in mind, my mom is coming for a visit and he received a text message on his phone from a woman. The text message, because it was a preview, so the text message was something where if you didn't know the context of the text thread, you could either go left or you could go right with it. Mm. So there's, again, a lot of this. She says what she's going to say, then she says she's going to say it, then she explains it. Hence the 7,000 hour runtime of this. Me being just curious, I opened up the phone, put the passcode in, read the text, then read the thread. Come to find out, it was a text from his aunt. His aunt and his ex share the same name. That is a red flag. That's a red, that's a red flag. That's a red, no, no, no. <laughs> of course, your aunt and whoever you're banging could share the same name. Maybe you just have a common name. Tina, I don't know. Point is, you put in your phone, Aunt Tina. Because if you don't, if you just have Tina and Tina, and you're like, you want to see this big boy, Tina? You want to see this big thing? And then she replies, sure, nephew. Don't tell your uncle about this. Then you have problems. You have family problems that's a red flag that's a, such a red flag that's I, I don't even know how to that's such a red flag man aunt side 
chick, red flag. Cool. That's why I say it could go left or it could go right. Text was from the aunt. So I clicked on it just being nosy. And what do my wondering astigmatism eyes see? I, I really hope no uh, dick pics. I really hope none of that. So in his Facebook Messenger is about seven women. I can see their profile picture and I see their names. Some of them had a preview. The ones that um, he had not read, I could see the preview of the message. One in particular said, when are you gonna come get this? Y'all know what I'm talking about. This yes, yes, yes. I often ask this to many people. When are you coming to get the stick? It has been waiting. Get it. Take it. Use it. I know my approach is not as good as Legion's over here. It's actually horrible that you're married and this absolute joke is slanging dick around. Okay, if you're single, go ahead. Slang it like it's a helicopter. If you're not, don't. That's basically the options you got here, man. Don't marry someone and then do that. This sucks, but hey, man, it's not his aunt, right? Right? She, does, she hasn't confirmed if it was his aunt or not. So I clicked on that one first. The other messages were in you windows, meaning the other messages from the other women were in you windows. They were not as graphic as the one between him and her. Oh, okay, okay. I'm a plumber. Would you like to clean my pipes? I'd like to have my pipes cleaned by you, lady. I'm a train conductor. I would like to choo-choo into your hole. I got a new car. I'd like to park it in your garage. All right, I'm done. I confronted him. I absolutely confronted him. Good. And Great. was like, what the fuck is this? If two plus two is four and five plus five is ten, what the fuck is this? Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what the clap. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. I hope that's how she said it as well. She has this phone. Two plus two is four and five plus five is ten. What the fuck is this, huh? He did not, you know, oh, that ain't, that ain't what happened, blah, blah, blah. Instead, what he hit me with is, man, I was just playing around. Carry on. Ain't nothing happened. Um, you know, I shouldn't have said all that, but I was just flirting. I was just playing around, man. Sorry. I said, come get this dick whenever you want it. I was just playing, man. I was, I'm like, JK, just kidding. <laughs> all right, so, yo. I'm, I just, I'm just a, I'm just a jokester, a prankster. <laughs> come suck it all out of me. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> Unless you're gonna do it. it. It ain't mean nothing. I don't even know that girl. I was just flirting. What pissed me off the most was that here I am as a woman behaving, trying to do the right thing by him and this marriage. And you mean to tell me you out here offering your dingling to random chicks that you don't even know. Look, okay, it's not as provocative as it used to be. Sending your butt, sending whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we all have bodies, that's fine. Let's be mature about this. But if you're married, if you're gonna commit to a relationship where you literally say, I am yours, I am not everyone else's, I like that, I commit to that, don't do this. You know, for your own sake. God, nobody wants a fucking broken home. That's that's ridiculous. I know, as men, it's not easy. Sometimes temptation it happens. Men are sort of physical creatures, but if you don't have to marry a girl. You don't have to say yes. But if you're going to do that, then you might as well protect the sanctity off it, right? It's, it's part of life. Grow up, is what I'm saying. So I don't know what to say. Before that, go ahead. If you're divorced, <laughs> slang that divorce dick. I don't know. Just when you're married, stop. 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 Do you know how much I have turned down in order to be faithful? So this- God damn, what the flex that was. I didn't know she was getting, she was getting served dick for lunch and oh God, okay. <coughs> this is where I introduced that we need to do marriage counseling. Okay, well, you know, seeing someone basically, like, I mean, she basically says the reason why she doesn't kick him out yet is because he hasn't physically done anything. And I understand her point. I think uh, it depends on each person's situation. I know a lot of people say they wouldn't stand for it because it's the principle that matters. But I can also see her point of view from being like, okay, he hasn't physically done anything. I think 
it's not beyond saving at this point. I get both. So they go for marriage counseling. He didn't have any issue doing marriage counseling. We did not do premarital counseling, but he was like, that's fine. He was like, I don't have no problem doing marriage counseling because if anything, it can help us. He may not have physically cheated, but he damn sure got caught doing a little something, something, because they had exchanged pictures. Then how can you accept it as a joke? What kind of joke has visual evidence? Woman, I'm trying to be on your side here. I just explained how this guy's a dickhead. And now you're like, uh, they exchanged pictures. And then he said JK at the end. Bro, what kind of humor is that? I never seen a comedian show his flashes ding dong and then be like, ha 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 ha. That's not a punchline, that's a d Oh my god. That's a red flag. Dick pics from a husband that's not yours? I don't know. Now, if you send your wife dick pics, that's just sexy. But, um. Ooh, I don't, I don't like drawing. Uh, yeah, I draw very small ones. That's a red flag. Y'all know what pictures he sent. I saw it in March. There were messages from December, November. Self-esteem taken a I left and I would just go for a drive because driving clears my mind. Clearly, and you know all the routes. Even Uber drivers ask you when Google Maps go down. I get it. Part 23. I had found a pastor and his wife who agreed to do our counseling. There seems to not be any sort of intimacy. They were concerned. Part 23 starts with them agreeing to counseling. I am beginning to not understand this woman at this point because I think that there is a lot of evidence to suggest it's not just this, it's like everything else, the gaslighting, everything. And she doesn't have any answers for any of these things. I feel like if you don't have clarity in a relationship, that's tough. If you don't have clarity in a damn marriage, what the hell? So she does go to counseling to her credit the counselors are like "Ooh, this this don't look good we continued counseling with them up until a week before i found out what i found out and he got kicked out he came to me a few days after we started our first counseling session and he was like we should get a joint bank account what the fuck why would you open a joint account with all this crap <sighs> this man like i mean Five houses, one trip to France, cars th thwarted. Oh, he's the leader of the ketchup companies, the vice president of sending dick pics. Why? Are you smoking a joint? Why would you open one with him? He didn't. Okay. So he shows me his checking account. His checking account available balance was about, it was just over 9,600. Mine's was just over 1,500. So there was a huge disparity in the amounts. Okay, well, that's why. There it is, there it is. It all comes back to money with this woman. It's money in a good way, money in a bad way. She is enticed by the fact this guy has $9,600 and it is more than what she has in savings. And she's like, okay, I, I'm gonna take some of that money, $9,600. <laughs> He offered to pay a house in cash to the tune of $750,000, but he has 9,000 in savings. Who's gonna make this make sense? Really? All of a sudden it started getting cold and wear a jacket. Carry on. And so he logged in on the phone and turned it towards me and I could see available checking just over 9,600. I logged into my savings. I showed him how much I had in savings. He logged into his Chase savings. It was roughly about 15,000. Oh damn, so he's got multiple bank, I forgot that he had five bank accounts, three normal ones, one offshore one and one random account. Like any good husband, I got secret bank accounts that I'll never show you. That just sounds like a good relationship, right lady? <sighs> right? All right. But I also knew that he told me he had a US bank savings and he had an offshore savings. So at this point in time, I asked him, show me the other two accounts. He would not do it. This became a huge bone of contention. Besides the fact that he's boning you out of contention, I would at least like to know why he said no. In the seven hours that she explains the story, she never gives any explanation. Like if he said, no, I want this to be private because X, Y, Z, and it makes logical sense. Yeah, I mean, I might not agree with it, but I can understand privacy. Money is a private thing, even between couples. Come on, this guy might have a good reason, but I'll never know because she never explains. He would not show me the two accounts that he claims has the most money in there. But that's the thing. If he's claiming that he has money and not showing you, then it's like kind of a 
why wouldn't you show me? Because if he's not gonna tell you, if he's just like, this is something I'm a bit secretive about, I'm a bit private about this, all you need to know is we're starting bank account, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, okay, at least he's being consistent. If he's like, I got $6,000 million in here, but I'm not gonna show you, because then you'll see it. Then it's like, you know, big question marks across your head, like, why did you say it, but not show me? That's suspicious. Then we went back into marriage counseling, like the next session, and I bring it up. I said, he will not show me these two accounts that he claims has the money in there. And so Legion's all defensive, folding his arms, and he's just like, I'm I'm done with this. I'm not gonna get attacked because I'm not comfortable showing you the amount of money that I have. But the pastor's wife was like, I don't have a good feeling that y'all are gonna make it a year. So uh, at the marriage counseling session, she brings it up, he crosses his arms, negating everything. And the lady who does the marriage counseling is like, honestly, I got money on you guys not making it. I just took out a bet. I bet my life savings you guys won't make it a year. I'm going to double my money. And that leads us on to part 25. Woo! Halfway. Part 25. Yeah, she's looking for a new job. Got a phone call, um, they and they had sent me an email with a background packet. In the background packet, it asked for my spouse's full name, his date of birth, my spouse's social security number. So I showed it to Legion and I was like, I need your social because you know I'm applying for this job. It's a great job, it's way more money. <sighs> He did not want to give me his social. Okay, so we're on to part 25. This uh, protagonist is getting a new job. She's finally moving up in the world and she needs some spousal information, which she seems to not be able to give because she doesn't know his social security. Last time she checked, she ran it through Google search engine. Nothing came up. It came up as like uh, 2233 plus 46. It just gave her a math answer. That's not what she's looking for. She needs to know who the hell Legion is. What kind of a name is Legion anyway? That sounds like a... Union, that doesn't, I don't know. And I looked at his social and something about the social seemed different than the social security number that I remember seeing when we did our marriage license. Basically what it is, is that the first three numbers were different. So I decided that I was going to roll the dice and take the social from the background packet, my current job. I was trying to get a new job. Okay, so I took that social and I ran a background check on it. All right. If you have to run two security checks on your husband, you gotta divorce him. This is not a thing that you, this is not romantic. Oh, he's he's so romantic, he's mysterious. I had to do background security checks on him. You know what I mean? It's not the undertaker. If he starts appearing whenever there's smoke and shit, he's probably lighting fires. You know what I mean? Like, come on, come on. This is bad. This is really bad. Also to note during this time, I think I told you guys he had hit his leg at work. No, you didn't though. In the seven hours and a half hours, there I didn't cut anything between this. She never, she's like, I think I told you guys, didn't tell us. Actually, a part of the story that seemed, that matters did not say it, but apparently he hit his leg at work and that leg just continues it, it's just, it's a stanky leg. So what was happening was it was getting more and more difficult for him to walk. This person is, is saying that they were a student there. Can you verify it? The response I got was there were no records found with that social security number. So she runs the social security number and it, she traces it back to San Diego, like college and stuff. There is no record of him being there. So she calls San Diego College and she's like, hey, can you verify? <laughs> And then the people there are like, no record of this guy, this number, or this is social security there. So there's something fishy going on because that's where he said he played football, arena football, actual football, I don't know, soccer, whatever he did there, he did at San Diego Tech or whatever it's called. I asked him about it. And in part 26, part 26. So she clickbaits us to the next part, but hell yeah, we're already watching the whole damn thing. Nobody gets to 25 and then gives up. Nobody's giving up on you, lady. I asked Legion, what's the deal about San Diego State? Without missing a beat, this man said, well, I was a private citizen. What the fuck does that mean? Yes. What the fuck does that mean? He said is that when he started at San Diego State, his father paid money so that his name and social would not be publicized and he would be considered a private citizen. That's so cool. Now, and I'm not saying he would do this, but now if he murders people, they can't legally do anything about it. There's just a guy at San Diego State reducing the population of San Diego because he's a private citizen. They don't have his socials, they don't have his footprints, fingerprints, anything. This man is a ghost to them because his dad paid 
10 extra dollars to get his name expunged from the record. Good stuff, guy. He said that he had a card where all he had to do was show the card. He does not have to give his name. He does not have to give any information. Even James fucking Bond had a number. You know what I mean? Like, come on, though. Come, really? I really? He just showed a card? What was it, a Starbucks card? Free coffee for me, private citizen. You want coffee? For real? Does this sound like it's even remotely true? Even to a compulsive liar, this is a big, this is some bullshit. I said, and you claim that you played football. And he was like, why are you asking all these questions? No, 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 keep asking. Like, what does the number on the back of his shirt say? Like, is this a question mark? And his name just has like a bunch of like random symbols. It has Latin or something at the back. How are they gonna record any of the stats if they can't have his face or anything? And why is he even playing football? He's never gonna make the league if they're not even allowed to know him. Does this seem realistic to anyone at this point? I mean, this, that's a red flag. <laughs> is a private citizen? What the f And I said, I'm just curious. I'm just, mm. Meh. No, meh. You don't need to meh. This is a serious thing. You're married to him. You're devoting your life to a man who's a private citizen. I mean, does he exist in your life? What the hell is a private citizen? I want to be a private citizen. I don't know. He's a private citizen. My social security number is question mark, question mark, two, three, question mark, because I'm private. My dad paid 10 bucks and nobody knows anything about me now. There is no such thing as private, I'm sorry. What at first was a, oh, I hit my knee at work, turned into, no, it was an old football injury, this has happened before. Turned into, you know, it's painful for me to walk on it. Turned into, it's it's actually hard for me to work on it. But he was, he was still going to work at 6.15 every morning. So at one point in May, he calls me from work and tells me that he got a phone call from his stepson. Okay, so his leg is actually getting worse. Whatever happened to his leg, I don't know if it's real, I don't know if it's fake, but his leg is like, proceedingly, it's getting more stanky. But he's also calling his wife to tell him that his stepson, something's happened now because the wife, remember, she was in California and then moved to Georgia because that's a move that anyone would make for some reason. And things are happening between his stepkids, who he likes. These are the only people in his life who he likes. The phone call from his stepson, the stepson was crying and was just absolutely distraught. And I'm at work in my office like, what's going on? And he says to me that the stepson informed him that his stepdaughter passed away. God damn, really? Someone messaged me now? Sorry. But his stepson died, our oh, daughter's stepson one of them died, man. Oh my God. This is what happens when you move to Georgia. You die. That she died from Everyone in this family keeps dying from that thing, man. You better start suing someone. Cause this, this and all that shit's not working, bro. Your parents are dead. Your grandma died. Jesus Christ. And he was also calling to ask if I would object to him giving his ex-wife $2,000. Oh, I thought he was going to say something else. Towards the funeral. Surely nobody would make that up. So, I mean, you're looking at a guy who I literally had to buy a whiteboard for to write down all of the lies. So I don't know about that, but maybe, possibly, that seems like a very devious thing to lie about, like a exceptionally bad thing to lie about. I give you that. Part 27. Part 27, who the F did I marry? She's looking like she's on rap battle number two, still in the Simpsons costume now. I decided to do another background check. Like, do they have background checks like buy two, get the third one free? Is this what this is? You got a background check coupon or something? How many, how many? How many do you need, man? This time, not only did it give me the states, it gave me addresses and it also gave me names of people who were like associated with Legion and that address. Those names was his ex-wife. I did a search for her on social media. She was not there. At an address associated with the ex-wife, I found where they had filed for divorce. Metro Atlanta County. So at this point, it's part 27. You can see that her marriage is like all but sort of over in the sense that she doesn't seem to be talking anything about love anymore. The only thing holding it together is the thinly veiled effort of money and the fact that he might have some and she's still looking for that pot of gold. I don't think she's a gold digger. She's just someone who wants to be financially stable. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, broke. 
But at the same time, she's doing her research now. She's looking at the background information and she's snooping. But you know what? Who wouldn't if all this happened? So I don't blame her. And she finds out that the ex-wife filed for divorce instead of Legion doing it, the ex-wife did it. And it wasn't because she cheated, it's because he sucked. I don't know if that's the official reason, but she did, that's what apparently happened. Also, it didn't happen in California. It happened right here in Atlanta. According to the state of Georgia, you were married here. You were divorced here. That's, that's, that's Georgia's slogan. I get my peaches down in Georgia and also my divorces. The fucking both of them, I get down in Georgia. I told my boss I had to go. I grabbed my purse, grabbed Why? my keys, and I drove to the Why court. Why are you doing, you got a new job. You're trying to make your life get better. Why do you keep doing this? Your last job. She said that the boss like had to get her in back to the office because she was falling asleep watching Netflix. Oh my God, woman. Every time someone bestows on you a responsibility, you easily break that. Why? You just got this job and you're like, I'm taking a half day to expose my my husband, who's a lying, cheating fool, but I'm gonna do it on work hours. It seems about right. First thing I see, he didn't file, she did. He filed what is called a pop popper affidavit. You don't know what that is? I'm going to do my best to- I hope that people don't know what this is. I hope people have never been in the position where they're like, Yeah, the popper affidavit. Yeah, I've signed that many times. So I hope not, but she does explain it. Explain it real quick. Basically, he filed an affidavit with the court saying that he is so poor, he could not afford the fees to pay for a divorce. Doesn't that sound like a yo mama joke? Your mama's so poor, she had to sign the popper affidavit because she couldn't afford to get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a fucking joke, bro. Um, I think what it refers to is the prince and the pauper thing. I'm assuming it's that word. And it just means someone who is not off money. I didn't know that. I guess I learned something today. If I ever get divorced, I'm gonna do it with zero monies. You can't get a dollar out of me. According to the divorce documents, he was served at like a grocery store. That is what was listed as his employer. And it had a date of when he was served. Maybe he's not, maybe like back then, he was literally selling the ketchup. Like now you're, you know him as vice president of ketchup. Like he puts the sauce on the big meat. Back then, maybe he was just in the grocery store putting the sauce on the little meat. I don't know, maybe. So I see all of this in one day. She listed her name, her address, and her phone number. So I did what any rational person would do. I'm gonna underline the word rational. I don't know about any of this being rational. That shit insane, perhaps. Rational? Mm, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna write down. She calls the phone number. <laughs> She's turning into like a regular old spy or something. She's going down the rabbit hole and you know, I don't, still don't blame her. It's like you want the answers so you can have that clarity, then peace at, at mind and stuff. So I, I get it, but it, it is bad shit. Like don't, don't like make it seem like it's not. At least understand what you're doing is, is way out there. <laughs> But she calls the ex-wife and it's crazy. I mean, like how how she got the number and everything, crazy. Part 28. Woo, part 28. Is the phone call that I had with the ex-wife. So I called her. She answered, Barbara, this is Shirley. I am the wife of Legion. Then she starts laughing. That's or that's a bad sign, isn't it? Isn't that a bad sign? You call someone's ex-wife and you say, this is his new wife, and then she starts <laughs> laughing. That's scary. He said to me, and I quote, if you were calling me, then I know it's bad. She said, whatever he tells you, it is a lie. I could have told you that, and I'm not even his ex-wife. Look at this. So I just asked her, I said, what was your experience? She told me how they met. I said, well, were you guys ever in California? She said, no. She was like, that man ain't never been front past the East Coast. She said, I don't know what all y'all got going on. She said, but if it's anything like what it was for me, it's bad. There's an ex-girlfriend that shares the name, that shares the same name as his aunt. I told you, I went back up. I told you that's his side chick, his ex-girlfriend. He said it was his sister or some, uh, some other bullshit. One thing is true, him and the aunt and the sister slash girlfriend shared the same same name and he better change one of their names on the phone. She and I talked about her. She said, you're gonna pull her name out in bed and it's gonna remind you of her. Formulate a nickname for one of them. Anita Max Wien. Do something. Legion, I'm telling you, divorce is the, is the best of your problems. You gotta fix this one. The reason why they broke up because 
the ex-girlfriend had reached out to her about six months before he met me. On Legion's driver's license, he had a Georgia driver's license with the Douglasville address. What he told me was that it was the address that his sister, because remember I told y'all his sister Shantae lives in Douglasville. She's a nurse married with two kids. The ex-wife is telling me, no, that's the address for the girlfriend. So the girlfriend is the ex- Sister. What? His lies are in a legion of their own. What the hell? I'm confused. He had moved in with her. He created this whole narrative with her. She found out and she kicked him out. I said, if everything is a lie, I said, I have one question for you. Okay, so basically what we've learned so far from this phone call is that this man has lied to three women at least. That is a lot of lying. That's at least one lie per woman. And that is too much. How is your daughter? Part 29. So she asked the pivotal question, how was your daughter? And, uh, you know, this is the one that Legion claimed had passed away. This is like shocking to the woman. <gasps> Cause she's like, why, what do you mean? To our protagonist's surprise, she's well and alive and doing fine. She said, what did he say about my daughter? I didn't have the heart to tell her. We both ignored red flags, but it is not your fault. Yeah, so the protagonist doesn't tell the ex-wife, of course. I mean, she leaves that piece to her. The ex-wife also says, I don't want anything to do with this. Please don't bring me up, mention my name, which is a really bad endorsement. Like, cause I mean, it's conceivable that even if you have a really bad marriage, whatever, you could still be cordial to each other, but this is not one of those cases. And it seems to me that Legion has just lied about the biggest thing that I've ever heard of. The person that he said he loved, his stepdaughter, he lied about her being deceased and at this point if you know he's lied about that there is nothing that he wouldn't lie about any given person would say that is enough for me to want to call this off because i don't think that i could deal with someone who can lie about something that real nobody should be doing that the woman also says it's okay it's not your fault so she's lying because it is your fault lady lady it's your fault it's not fully your fault but the fact that you're keeping this up it's a little bit your fault. Just a little, tiny, 10%. She said, this is on him. I took the long way home. What does that mean? It means that I purposely, no, no, I probably should have no, taken no, 075 to 285. Oh my God. This is what I was telling you about. In four hours of this shit, four hours of I took the 75 to the 85, I was going 65, and my car was in this in 1995. Please spare me that one. A couple of days later, I decided to look up his mother's obituary. As we all do at one point in our lives, look up the mother's obituary. But remember the mom was, uh, uh, actually, I don't actually know. He didn't show us where the mom was buried. He only showed the grandma and grandpa. Apparently was one of five through both parents, brother in Philly, younger brother in Nashville, an older sister in Douglasville and a baby sister in Augusta. So why is it on his mother's obituary? There's only three children named. We've established that he's lying, but who the, who the fuck is LaToya? I don't even know who LaToya is, but apparently it's one of his two sisters. The thing is that she looks up on the mom's obituary and the two girls are not in any of them. And then she goes and delves deeper into the grandmother's situation and finds the same thing has happened, which is very suspicious. We know the lies are there. She's just trying to figure out how much of a spider web he's created of these lies. Part 30 clarification video. Ah, uh, okay, so we move on to part 30. Woo, we're breezing through this now. Clarification video i don't know what's going on all right that was a great very good thank you for telling me you don't know anything part 31 we're back to it part 31 i found his mother's obituary online i found a divorce record with legion and the same woman's name that was in the obituary the two of them had lived in Rhode Island. In a shocking twist, Legion had been married before before, not just the ex, but the XX. And they were married in Rhode Island and she's listed on the obituary. She's not dead. So this man had been married at least twice, including our protagonist, three times. So that's the connection with Rhode Island. I could not find the obituary for his dad. Obituaries tell you a lot. Okay, I'm gonna write that one down, but it is very suspicious when you say words like obituaries tell you a lot. Sounds like you're trying to rob graves. She's in grave danger right now. Once again, it did not list the two sisters, Shantae and Kim. Something, you know, is 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 up when it comes to Shantae and Kim. 
because but what I do know is that he has talked to them multiple times in front of me. I d so like this is the thing. Again, I really wish I had some clarification on whether she heard women's voices talking to her on the phone. Because if she did, then there's like more questions. And if she didn't, then it's a very scary thing that this man possibly has been having conversations with the question mark, question mark. I don't know who. But if you can't hear someone on the other end, they have that new in-seal phone technology. It doesn't allow you to hear other people, which is bullshit. I just made that up. There's no way that's a thing. You probably would be able to hear someone, like, uh, unless you have really bad hearing. Legion is lying. You just have to figure out where it starts, girl. When he told me the grandmother died from <laughs> and he was crying, boohooing, and all that shit, she actually had died in July of 2008. <laughs> you can tell she's done with us. <laughs> Boo-hooing and all that shit. This bitch was crying and lying. <laughs> it was like giving him the third degree now. Legion is almost bedridden from what happened with his knee. He was not lying about the injury. You could clearly see that he was in pain. And the pain was becoming debilitating because he was not eating. When I met this man, he was a size 3X. Okay, see, now I'm not saying if you're a bigger size guy, it's bad. But like, she said he looked like exactly like in the pictures as if like, you know, this man is a model. But he's 3, 4XL. You need four extra lodges on one shirt to make one shirt for this guy? All right, that's fine. He played NFL. Maybe he has a 4XL. I'm just saying. You need to give me some, like, information so I can imagine. I thought 6'4", chiseled dude, looked like Tinder Swindler type guy. On top of all of this, he had lied about the death of the ex-wife's daughter. Part 32. By this point in June, I have been offered the new job. That's very good. Congratulations. Very slow, though. But yes. I was going to work and coming home, the house was the in the exact same place that it was when I left. I would fucking hope so. I would really hope that your house did not leave and grow legs at some point. Thank you for that. Captain Obvious, what are you saying? I think the knee was a symptom that was not some football injury that was not. Um... Oh my God, imagine if his knee is like Pinocchio's nose and every time he lies, it gets worse. That's why he's losing weight. <gasps> Oh my God. It's not some football injury that was not, um, oh, I hit it at work. It wasn't that. Something else was going on. What was happening was I didn't care because of all the stuff I was yeah, 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 no, no, of course. <laughs> uh, this man was, uh, he was crippled basically as he's in a condition where he looks like he was going to kick the bucket. Basically what's happening right now is I don't give a fuck. I got promoted. So beginning of June, he is in the bed, sleep, and I get his phone. See, now this is this is good thinking. This man, he's in dire need of help, and you know it, it is then. That's the time when you can steal someone's phone because they don't have the ability to fight back. That's how, this is just very smart. Good work. Had a work phone and he had um, a personal phone. So I look through the phone and I see text messages between him and a woman named Peaches. I got my peaches out in Georgia. Mm, unless he works at the VP company of selling fruit. That's that's odd. But also, this man has two phones and he's the vice pr principal president of catch up. I don't know, man. Kevin Gates has two phones and that guy's crazy. Unless one is for ketchup, one is for mustard, there's no way he should be having two phones. But anyway, he find, she finds peaches in his phone, not ketchup. What I can tell is that he met peaches on POF. If you don't know what POF is. Power of friendship. Pussy of <laughs> now, that, now that's an app. A girl is like, which one do you want, bro? <laughs> you can swipe left or right. <laughs> Apparently Peaches was was a prostitute. Prostitute of faith. Pick one. You can't have both, buddy. You can't be a faithful person if you're gonna have prostitutions. But I guess plenty of fish is what it's called. He met her on there, but that's not plenty of fish. It's P.O.P. Plenty of poof. In the text messages, she's listing the prices. I thought it was illegal in America. I don't even know. I'm not a VP of ketchup, so I don't do this stuff very often. But like, I guess I guess Peaches is. He's hitting them. He asked for a hand. This is in the text messages. She told him it would be like $40. That's so much money. What the hell are you doing, bro? Do you have that money? <sighs> How much is the ketchup industry paying you? You keep busting your condiments off to that? Okay. 
Peaches must have been good. He asked how much would it be for oral. She said it would be 60, because it was 60 and 80. Okay, this, men, let me teach you something. You're not gonna cheat, but if you do, don't ask for oral, ask for coral. Because if you ask for coral, then it sounds like you're just asking for a weird request. And now she's like some sort of fisherman and she's like selling you coral reef sort of shit for your fish tank, I don't know. But nobody can get you for that. And your wife's like, what? Who's peaches? That's a fisherman. And she's giving me coral for $60 an hour. Okay? So that's, that's my one tip. Ask for coral. I learned that from SpongeBob. One was the price with a condom. What was the price without one? I have no actual answer for that one. If you're going to follow up the coral thing with a condom, then you're fucked. If you just ask for like a condominium or maybe a condiment since you're a VP. I'm not trying to teach you how to get away with murder here, but you're trying to get away with lying and you're not doing that very well. After that, I can't stay with a guy that lies. So when I saw the cheating stuff, I was like, oh shoot, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Because I know my father in heaven's going to forgive the fact that I'm going to divorce him for infidelity. I got grounds now, bitch. So our protagonist gets a little spicy right there, but you know, all power to her. I, you know what? I think it's even very uh, sweet in a sense, in a very dystopian sense that she actually was praying on the Lord because she got married and said like, oh, I don't want to divorce someone. I know it's not a good thing to get divorced when this man has given her every reason and then some to do it. Oh man, get, get yourself out of that game. This guy is no good. The next part is the day that he gets kicked out. Part 33. And so I went in his room, he was away. Ooh, okay, we're on to part 33 and he's getting kicked out now. The lies have accumulated. She's realized there is no way that she actually can make peace with any of this. And the thing is that even after this man is out of her life, the lies continue, which is just, it's crazy the amount that he's done. He was watching YouTube on his cell phone. I was like, can we talk? I'm gonna ask you something. I just want you to be honest with me. You never went to San Diego State, did you? That is not the leading question I would have thought in a bunch of all this stuff. I, even though she has proof for like everything else, the one thing that she doesn't really have proof for, she brings up uh, San Diego State. They'd be very sad to not have a man like Legion play for them. He rolls his eyes and he's like, I already, I said, calm down. I said, you never lived in California. He's like, I fucking showed you the house I had in California. I said, I bet you've only lived in Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. And I said, I don't I don't think that this is going to work. He was like, so what you saying? You you don't want to be married to me anymore? And I said, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Damn. Stella gets a groove back. She's finally ready to let go of this man. I think she's been ready for a while, but she's got enough peace of mind to be like, this is too much. I've reached my limit. And if you push a person too far, they're going to break. Everyone has a limit. Good for you for reaching it. Now is time to get this leeching out of your house. Marriage is, you know, you, you, you had to fight for what you want. I said, I don't want this. I said, I think that you should call your brother or your sister now and I think that you need to pack a bag and I think you need to get the fuck out my house. Okay, she's getting a little angry, a little spicy, but that calm spite that like, get the F out, I'm gonna make you. You don't know what she's gonna do. She's a bit crazy right there. He called his aunt that she was on speakerphone and so is it his aunt or his side chick which one because remember legion remember how i said you might have a stanky leg and lying about everything in your life but the one problem you do have is this your aunt or your side chick and if you have to flip a coin it's not good she was like you know what's going on and he was like my wife don't want me no more. Very good, Legion. My wife don't want me no more. I'm in bed just sitting here taking a shit. My wife don't want me no more. I'm sad. I cry every day. What a poo poo head. I snapped. I could have fought every member of the Kansas City Chiefs and beat every last one of their asses. The hell did they do to you? She snapped because he did the worst thing. Like, man, it must be infuriating when someone who's a big ass liar lies in front of someone else about something you never did. I, I can understand the rage that she got but apparently she got so much rage she could have won the super bowl by herself that's crazy she said beat every one of their asses i'm sorry kansas this woman is uh she's clearly she's a mad woman i was more so looking at what weapons were in the room the lamp the tv the dresser <laughs> i clearly saw what was getting ready to happen had he not gotten up got his shit and got Ah, oh, she was going to ex nay him uh oh spaghetti -o. this is what happens when you bottle things up and then you let them all out at once she might shank this man 
that's not good. Out of my house. In the name of Jesus, get your stuff and get out that house because I think she might kill you. Let's all just take a deep breath. So yeah, the aunt and the mom and everyone else is like, she might kill you. We could have had an OJ situation right there. <laughs> Part 34, like, don't talk to me like you done lost your fucking mind, da, da, da. And I calmly got close to him. I got like this close. And I literally said, I will beat you like the bitch you are. See, now, TikTok is a lot of things, right? A lot of people like, yeah, I'm gonna tell my story. But one thing TikTok does, just like rappers do in songs sometimes, it's very self-incriminating. People like feeling powerful or whatever emotions they're going through. Like, I know you're mad, but like, it's never okay to incite physical violence. Man, woman, child, he man, she man, the man, doesn't matter. Just don't beat people like bitches. So I'm throwing stuff throwing stuff up against the wall. So, oh my God. Look, you don't have to cosplay as the Hulk because this man lied. Because again, if we roll reverse this and he says, I'm going to beat you like the bitch you are, then it's like, okay, now we're gonna have the handcuffs and police there as fast as possible. If he starts throwing stuff around, okay, someone's gonna tackle him down. The Kansas City Chiefs are gonna have your back. But if a girl says it, it can't be okay too, because that's very scary. I know if someone said that to me, I'd be hella scared. I'd be like, oh my God, I don't know you. Why would you say this to me? Please. Leave me alone. He was not getting up to go to the bathroom. He was drinking the power aid and then using the empty bottles to pee in. Okay, yeah, that's when she figures out the most disgusting secret of Legion is that the Pyrate bottles that he was drinking were not yellow because he was drinking them. It was yellow because he was filling them up with his puss. Oh! Otherwise known as recycling to bear girls. Puts on some sweatpants, he puts on a shirt, He's limping down and she's like, you really gonna kick me out on my birthday? She didn't mention this shit, what? You could have filmed this whole thing on TikTok. I know I know. at the time you didn't want to and stuff, but like imagine it's his birthday. You knew you were kicking him out. You got all this evidence. You compiled a whole book. Then you gave him a cake and you're like, happy birthday to you, Legion, you asshole. <laughs> Happy birthday. And then you like shoved it in his face like, this is all the lies. Get out of my house. Instead of like trying to, you know, kill him with a lamp. That's ratchet. <laughs> so he ends up getting in the car, driving off. Part 35. Damn, we're on part 35. These parts are just going, whew. But Legion gets in the car and drives off. So she manages to get him out the house. And hooray, hurrah for all. This man is finally out of her life. But he isn't though, because the remnants of Legion still remain. <laughs> to pack up his stuff. He left all his WWE championship belts. Do they have belts for lying in the WWE? What the fuck am I? He's got WWE championships. Is Was he a wrestler at some point that I was not aware of? And if you know anything about WWE championship belts, you know those things are expensive. I know WWE. I know you can't get the belts unless you're in the WWE. I don't, you can get replica belts, in which case this guy is clearly delusional if he's walking around like, I'm the world heavyweight champion. It's like, no, you're a 4XL. You're just a heavyweight fucking person, bro. I was going to have a burn party and I was going to put it on Facebook Live. I think that would be destruction of property. I don't agree with burning people's property. I know it's very tempting to do that stuff, but revenge is never that sweet so i left work early went to the courthouse and filed for divorce honestly for her this is like a fucking catchphrase her leaving work early and then telling you every route she's gonna take to wherever she's going is like that is who this person is every time they're like oh again again you just started work and you took five sick days you've been here two weeks and half of that time has been researching to get back at your shitty husband like oh my god then I get a message on Facebook Messenger from a woman claiming to be his cousin. Lord Jesus. She's finally gonna get Legion out of her life. Very good, she's making that decision. But she gets a message on Facebook, the place where she met Legion in the first place. And it's Legion's cousin claiming to be the cousin. Is it actually the cousin? We'll find out. He's telling the family that I kicked him out after he walked in on me having an affair that I stole his money and I then kicked him out. And the man I was having an affair with, he said was a law enforcement officer who used his duty weapon to threaten him to get out the house. Oh my God, all that sounds like he has a huge case on his hands. I don't know who would believe that story, but that's some junk. It's just a constant web of lies. Cousin was reaching out to me. She found my, she found me through a search on Facebook and was reaching out to me because she's like, we know he lies. So I'm just trying to figure out what 
Like, is this true? But then she explained to me, we didn't even know he got married. No, it's not. Does it sound true? Which woman is gonna be like, yes, yes, I did all those things. Yep, I stole his money. And yeah, I'm sleeping with a police officer that threatened him. Any other questions? Yeah, I stole his baby photos as well. I thought that was evil, so I did it. So this is the first time we're hearing about you. He talks to his brother every day. I said, I've heard him talk to his brother every day. All his brothers. She said, all his brothers? How many brothers do you think he has? I said he has four brothers. I named them. She said he has two brothers. She got. She said he has the twin and he has the older brother. I said twin. Who was the twin? Yeah, what? Part 35, the most interesting one since the first one. So he had twins. He's a twin brother. Oops. Part 36. A part 36. Now we're actually getting to the family tree because he just lied about brothers. He said he had extra brothers. So when he kept saying the younger brother, my younger brother by two years, it's his older brother by 20 minutes. Oh, so he's the younger brother. And they're twins? They share the same man or egg. I don't know how twins work. My dad's a twin. Is he lying? Oh my God. I have seen a picture of this brother. Yes, they do very much look alike, but they, I didn't know they were twins. You saw a picture and it didn't occur to you that, oh my God, you guys could be twins, even though they look the same. Someone need to do a background check on you. She said, I don't know who Shantae is. Kim is not his sister. Kim is my daughter. And she said, that's his cousin. Now the plot gets even weirder as one of the two sisters he mentioned is not a sister. She doesn't even know who she is. And the other one is the cousin's daughter. Weird. She was like, and they haven't spoken in about 20 years. Which would be very weird because he was always on the phone. What's happening? Oh my God. Is he lying? The family tree is mom and dad, the three sons. I said, then there was the uncle who also died from COVID. She was like, which uncle is that? I told her the name. She said, he's been dead since like, shit, 2010? Imagine hearing this about your like spouse, the person you were married to and being like, why would someone make that up? Why would someone want to relive that or make that up closer to a different timeline? What is this for? Because you always think about like, why would someone do something? There is no logical, reasonable reason a man would do, because it's not to gain money. It's not to gain sympathy. It's for nothing, which means there's only one conclusion that I've been coming to this whole series. This man's a pathological liar. It's not a compulsive liar. It's not a temporary liar. It's someone who's, it might be a mental disorder because pathological lying is is a mental disorder that this man has because that I just don't think that someone who has any rationale can make up stories like that he lied about people passing away who haven't and people who did he said they did it recently when they did it a long time ago that's wild what about the cousin nicknamed Junebug he has talked to his cousin Junebug on the phone yeah he had passed away in like 2016 so this is now three people that she's naming that I recall him having either a story about or a phone call with. Which is even scarier if this man has been like, hey, mom, what's up? Oh, my mom says hi. And then two days later, oh, she passed away, but let's not visit her grave might tell you the truth. That's crazy. Having these conversations, that to me seems like someone is just not in their right frame of mind. Having a conversation, knowing someone has passed away. Oh, they're giving me the heebie jeebies. The older brother is me finally talking to the older brother part 37 and in part 37 she talks to the actual older brother who gives her some more clarity she's learning more about this guy since he's gone than when he was there because finally the truth is coming out from people who are more credible that divorce settlement agreement has to be signed by the two of us. I didn't know that both people needed to sign. That's why they get people served. I learn things every day. I don't try and learn things about divorce. I don't want to pop up to a party like, you know, everyone gets divorced. 50% of people who ever get married get divorced, so. Shut the fuck up. I think that that's really crazy, but like now I know a lot about divorce thanks to lady. I need his signature. Sure enough, went ahead, drove down there. I met him at the UPS store. His nails had not been cut, so his nails were a bit long. He smell like the Chattahoochee dump. She sees him after a while, basically, because she's trying to get the divorce papers. So she's trying to say, hey, look, I need you to sign this so we can both like get this done. And when she sees him, he's, he's looking a bit, not looking too good, not looking too hot. My, my heart just kind of broke. It kind of did. I'll be honest, it kind of broke. 
Um, it did not break enough for me to not get that signature, though. There's a woman who has the priorities, right? She's looking at him. She's like, oh, this used to be my husband. Now he's just a fool. Sign here, please. Just like a UPS person. She need that signature. Good for her. I saw the condition of the inside of the car. And that's when I knew he's been living in his car. Or Damn, maybe his car was just dirty that day. Maybe he had like two hamburgers. He threw the wrappers on the floor. She's like, you've been sleeping in your car. Ew. Or like he didn't like clip his nails for two weeks. You're homeless. Ew. Ew, vice president of being homeless. This part is the next series of lies that I was faced with. Part 38. There's more lies. It's part 38. She's dressing in camouflage in a car. Part 38. We're now, we're not even dealing with United Nations of red flags. We are dealing with the Olympics. We are dealing with the parade of all nations, everybody. She's reached the end of the line here where she sees that this guy is just liar all this and he seemingly can't even have his life. Like if she saw him and his life is all together, he was in a suit, tie, everything was good. Then you just like, okay, maybe I was wrong, but she, everything just confirmed that. He's not doing too good. She's in camouflage. <laughs> what is she gonna learn? I got a red flag. Part 39, all of this happens in the month of July, 2021. Number one. I found a doc, a uh, packet from the condiment company. Like a ketchup packet or what are you talking? Can you be more specific here? Did she find like Heinz ketchup and she's like, oh, he does work there. <laughs> Where it showed his 401k contributions. It also stated in there that he had been terminated. Also in the book bag. She finds out he'd been terminated. That doesn't mean killed. I, for the longest time, just thought like a packet of ketchup had been like, this is ketchup, this is blood, and then like killed him. That's not what happened, he got fired. It was a copy of a driver's license that he had. The address on the driver's license, now this I still don't have an answer to, but the address on the driver's license was the same address as the cemetery. Oh. He's been dead the whole time? What are you saying? Oh my God, what kind of twist? Is this M. Night Shyamalan the movie? What the hell twist was that? This man has been dead the whole time living in your house? That's scary. He's having conversations with people who are dead because he can connect to them because he's not alive. Bruh. You married a dead man. Also in the book bag paperwork was unemployment paperwork. So it looked like he had been receiving unemployed unemployment just before I met him. I met him in March. It looked like he had been receiving unemployment January. That is really odd considering he's the VP of ketchup. So to be unemployed and also the vice president, someone's lying and I think it's you. So he's been receiving unemployment and the only thing I can think of is like, how was he paying her rent? Because she said her rent was just under a thousand, but she was paying rent and her utility bills that whole time. How much is unemployment and how can I get some? That's a lot of money. He's living in Georgia paying rent on a three bedroom house by just sitting on his ass. I need to make a note to myself. Move to Georgia. All right. February. So once again, let's confirm. He did not work for the condiment company for six to seven years. He would be a forklift slash loader. I decided to go down a new rabbit hole. Why did he have to go to jail? I guess that stuff was what she discovered in the first set of things that his job was really not true. He didn't work in the condiment company for seven years. I don't even think that's illegal. I think if you work in the condiment ketchup company for two years, you give up. There's nothing else. You squeeze tomatoes. What else do you want? He's a forklift driver and now she's going down another rabbit hole because he has been incarcerated before he went to jail. Why? Part 40. We're at the point where I've spoken to the female cousin and she gave me the phone number for the older brother. For the purposes of this video, we're going to call him Chris. Chris I was very nice. I called him. He was gracious. He said, my brother has always been a liar. Okay, so she calls the actual brother of Legion, whose name redacted, Chris, and he says that the brother's always been like that. So now we have two members of the family saying he's always been like that, which I'm sad about in a way because now it seems like maybe this person did need like some mental help sort of thing here because if everyone's known that he's been like that for a long time and that's the only thing that's consistent is that he's lying on this level. Somebody's got to get him help, right? Because that's, that's a long time to be lying about everything. Ask me what questions you have and I'll confirm what's real and what's not. First question I had was, when was the last time you spoke to him? Chris says, 2015, just after our mother's funeral. What this means is every single time that my ex-husband was on the phone, holding his phone like this, no one is on the phone. That's crazy though. That's crazy that he did it. And that's also crazy that for years, or at least a 
year, you didn't ever question why you couldn't hear a goddamn thing. And sometimes you saw the low battery sign when he was having mid conversations with this dude. His phone was off, his phone wasn't charging. Sometimes he was just holding a banana, pretending it was a phone. You never questioned any of that. Oh, hey, Chris, how you doing? Yeah, I'm just gonna talk to you about the same shit for 30 minutes every single day. Yeah, I know you have a wife and kids. I have a wife as well. Let's both ignore our wives every morning for 30 minutes. That sounds fun. Really? I don't know. On the phone. And the twin, according to Chris, now this is the part that might blow some minds. This will blow your mind though. The, the one that is older by 20 minutes is VP of his company, is married, drives a luxury car, and lives in like a four or five bedroom house. And I think we have our answer there. Like, I will get to it at the end of the video. That's it. I think we literally found motive. And there it was hidden amongst all this bullshit is the reason. And the fact that it's the twin brother. Imagine you had a twin brother and that person was like everything that you wanted to be. And you were everything that you didn't want to be. Now it's making sense, right? He was like, it sounds like he took the identity of the twin. Any family members? And I told him. I said, I met your aunt. Well, what aunt is that? I told him her name. He said, that ain't our damn aunt. He said, that is our mother's best friend and I don't trust that hoe. She's, she's going at him, man. Who the hell that? Like, oh, whoa. The best thing I can say to you is this. He said, thank God you ain't have kids with him. They had never talked. Part 41. Okay, so like that goes back up to the, when I said, you know, she was carrying his child and stuff and it was a really tough time. And I'm sure at the time she was thinking, why did this happen? And I think even in her own opinion, she later on says, in hindsight, it was a good thing because I, I didn't want to be connected to this guy. And so, you know, she's a woman of faith and hopefully this connects in that sense to like, although it is a terrible thing to have happened, maybe that's the calling for it, so yeah. So are you ready for me to tell you what's true and what's not? He said I would fucking hope so. It's been 41 parts. Jesus Christ, we only have nine left. Are you just gonna start telling us what's true and what's not? Their father was the furthest thing from a pastor. The mom was not a retired teacher. She did substitute teach at one point, but she was not a retired teacher. If he- Well, that's close. That's not too bad. That's not like, oh, she's an astronaut. Oh, what was she actually? Heroin addict. She believed she went to space. I don't know, maybe. The father, I think he drove trucks, which is not the furthest thing from a cop, but like, again, not a cop. But he did actually work in some sort of security. So this dude wasn't telling complete lies, but some of them were. He wasn't working at the condiment company or he got fired from the condiment company, how is he still paying the bills? She never answers this question. This is the actual question that I have that she just never answers. <laughs> Nobody has any answer to how he's actually getting that money. I think the person who has to answer is the governor of Georgia, the goddamn state at least, because how much are they paying benefit for? If this guy's getting money, he could pay rent just by sitting on his ass. That's crazy, man. Two, I thought that the company was paying for the work phone. No, because I found um, receipts where basically, and I didn't know this, ladies and gentlemen, I had no idea but I found receipts where he it was a prepaid phone and he's paying to add minutes to it. So the work phone was really just a secondary phone. Yeah, yeah, burner phone, yep. When you're the vice president of ketchup, you don't need two phones. Even as a lie, that's wrong. You're not the vice president of Mafia Incorporated. Who's gonna be calling you? People dealing with ketchup. That could be on your main phone. You don't need a burner phone for ketchup. Stop, stop being so. Into not just the photos of the work phone, I go into the deleted folder. So the deleted pictures. So this is gonna make her look a little bad. Like, I mean, some of the stuff is like, oh, I'm so sorry you even went through that. Other stuff is like, oh my God, woman, how do you not know this? You know when you watch Catfish and you're like, oh, I do feel sorry for you. And then they say something, you're like, you idiot. What is wrong with you? This is like how I feel simultaneously. I wanna give her a hug and then at the same time be like, come on, dude, seriously? And what I see is a is what looks like a screenshot of his checking account, the one that I saw with the available balance. Then there's another photo of the screenshot of the savings that he showed me. What he showed me when he turned his phone around showing me his available um, checking account balance was nothing more than a screenshot that he had found on Google. Oh guys, look, I don't I don't mean to tell you how much I make from YouTube, but it's $120 billion I made. Oops, sorry, this is just how much I make. It's in my offshore Chase bank account. She couldn't tell that this was a damn screenshot. Really? But if this was the only thing, I'd give her a pass, but it's not the only thing. I did a reverse image search of 
the charcoal BMW, nothing more than a screenshot he had taken off of Google. Charcoal BMW, cognac interior, Hennessy fucking steering wheel, wheelbarrow, whatever, fucking vodka, blinkers, everything in that car was a screenshot. He just went and took a screenshot off the car. Are you kidding me, lady? You said, hey, show me your car, and he showed you a car with you in it? If you're going to ask to see some, try and, like, try, just be like, hey, can you take a picture with yourself by the car next to it? Something, at least then he'd have to have Photoshop skills. He's literally going on Google and fooling you. Google Google is not made to catfish people, but it's what it does sometimes. Google Images. The house that he showed me that he had in San Diego, Google Images. Like. Guys, do you guys wanna see my house? There it is, guys. This is my house. Don't, but don't come to it. This is my house though. 50 bedrooms, five toilets, one shower. I don't waste water in California. This is not even human. I studied psychology, but. I didn't, gra I didn't graduate with- Yeah, you studied psychology, but you didn't graduate with common fucking sense, clearly. Because if you did, you'd know what a Google search would get you, man. To a compulsive liar, if you ask them, man, why did you lie to me? They probably are going to have a reason. Pathological liars don't have a reason. I get- No, compulsive liars don't necessarily have a reason. That's not necessarily true, but it is filled with a motive. Usually the motive is to get out of a hot spot or something. Pathological liar has no sense of reality therefore their lies can be rooted in nothing and they tell a lie to cover up another lie and don't even know where the truth begins and that is classified as a mental disorder so this might be an actual issue for the guy the phone call from the aunt she wasn't trying to be nosy or messy or anything like that she said i've seen him like four or five and if you want to top the lie off with the grandiose lie of all times this is what happens in part 42 the aunt who is not the side chick looked at the hard way, pulls, and she asks about like what happened, and the protagonist says this and that, I kicked him out and everything. And she's not trying to meddle, but she asks, okay, so what about the child? To which the protagonist is like, whoa, what do you mean? And apparently this mother flipper have been saying that they had a baby boy. Ugh, that's morbid. By <laughs> times he's come down here, and each time I've asked him to bring the baby. And I said, what baby? The baby that y'all had. He told me. Can you imagine having that conversation where like you're an aunt, the aunt, and you're like saying this and you hear a reply, what baby? And it doesn't strike like your head to be like, what? And she's like, the baby you had. What was the best reply? Like, oh, that one. Yeah, he's all right. I just forgot I had a kid. That's a tough, like obviously some crazy stuff. That you all, that y'all had a baby boy. And I said, no, ma'am. I said I had a miscarriage in June. Part 43, at this point, the only thing I know to be true his name i asked him why the hell did yeah legion legion smith allegiance i don't know what his name is did you even marry me he said i had to marry you he said i knew in order to keep you i was gonna have to marry you Yo damn that's cold that's really cold and also stupid like at that point it should tell you that this man is beyond himself like he's not even benefiting himself this is definitely some sort of thing that needs to be he needs to be in a, in a place where he can get help because this this is just that's not okay that's crazy he also said he married her because he had to because he knows that she wouldn't have said yes if he was just like i'm just gonna be your boyfriend which i, I don't even, <laughs> that's crazy as well like i don't know if it's true though she did seem like she was very eager to get married but we move on to bar 44 out of 50. so i went ahead and did a search for his criminal history. Oh my God, I thought you were done. Why are you still doing this? You're divorced, this man's, it's over, man. Criminal trespassing, he had been arrested for like suspended license, um, suspended registration, but the big thing was impersonating an officer. As sure as Peachtree runs from Bankhead to Buckhead, it is a f Stop, that's not a thing. That's not a thing. Stop, don't use it as a catchphrase. As sure as the 304 goes to 305, he was impersonating a police officer. That's not a catchphrase, stop. Apparently he impersonated an officer using his father's badge when his father walked at some sort of security thing for a short period of time. He busted into people's house, did fake searches. He basically turned into the greatest cosplayer of all time for a very short time before he was busted. Part 45, Legion basically disappeared. I'm actually waiting for the 30 days to be up so I can file the divorce settlement. So in part 45, after she figures out his criminal record, she knows everything about his past and his present, but now he's disappeared. So where's the future? Cause he needs to sign that damn sheet so we can get divorced from this man and move on. Everyone needs a legion out of their life right now. Never heard from him. I reached out 
to every person I know who apparently has had some form of relationship with him. All these people knew that Legion was a liar. Not a single one of them gave a shit if that man was dead or alive. It's getting to a point where it looks like this man has not made any friends, he's made more enemies, and uh, yeah, just to my conclusion, like I said, I'm gonna get to it, but I, I just think this is more of a, a problem within him as opposed to just making bad decisions. I think it's it, it might be deeper than that. It was, for me, it was such a sad moment. Where was he for those two weeks? Glad you asked. He had checked himself into a behavioral hospital in Augusta why not to get help no he checked himself into a hospital so he could stop sleeping in his car for two weeks he which is not a thing that you can do because if it was a thing that you could do i'd be at the hospital right now because god then i wouldn't have to pay rent Ooh, you know what i mean like i don't think you could just go into a place and be like let me check myself in i am tired please make my bed i don't think that that's necessarily a thing they'd probably have to check you make sure that this is something like a condition and i thought that he was just trying to seek help for himself which i was like okay but so i'm, I'm there's a bit of a gray area there but he he does check himself in so there's got to be some issue that they're aware of checked himself into a hospital so that he could have a bed for a couple of weeks. Part 46, Legion started calling and texting me, telling me that he was ready to come home. Someone had told him that legally he did not have to leave the house when I kicked him. So he does have a friend. Unless it was someone at the hospital who was like, Legion, no, you're not crazy. You can do this, buddy. You just go back to your house legally. She can't kick you out. You still got your shit in there. Now get out of this fucking hospital so we can get another stranger in here. You go, boy. I'm out because it was a marital home and he had just as much right to be there as I did. Local law enforcement informed me, well, technically he's right. So I told him, if you come to this house, step foot on this property, I'm calling the police and getting you arrested for trespassing. Yeah, so that's not a thing. But yeah, as weird and sad as it is, you can kick someone out of your house, but if you're married to them, legally they also can stay there. And I think he had been paying the bulls as well, so it's... Sort of a gray area, but one thing that did happen that she figured out when she was calling the police many times to try and get some sort of, I guess, restraining order or something, is that he had a warrant for his arrest in that state, which means he can't stay anywhere anymore. So she calls the cops. The cops are like, okay, we'll set up a sting operation. As soon as he comes back to get his stuff, we'll take him to the only place he can really have a good sleep, jail. So he eventually tells me, I'm gonna be there on Wednesday. Turns out he has a warrant for his arrest. So the police captain says, this changes everything. Part 47, he had called me and said that he was at the house in the driveway. And part 47, the protagonist is at work and Legion shows up to the driveway waiting for her to come back so he can get his stuff. His WWE belts, his album, and all of his burner phone stuff, I guess. And call 911. I then call the police captain. She then calls 911, which is the wrong thing to do, even though I, I just don't understand how, why. Because the police were like, call us, we have the warrant. The 911 person was probably like, okay, you have a warrant for his arrest? All right, we'll get right on that. Okay, bye-bye, and just doesn't do anything. But she calls the police and they promptly show up to arrest this man. He immediately answers the phone. He says, we just got the call. I'm sending four officers your way. Four cars pull in and stop just in front of my house. So then I ease up. He gets out the car, I guess, trying to see what's going on. I explain to the officer that walks to my window. I say, you know, this is what's going on. When he stepped out the car, I was like, oh my God. When I told you guys, when I met him, he was like a size three X. What got out of the car was easily a medium or large. Four officers leave. A medium large. So he was like a combo now. He was like so something you can get with like burger. He's like fries and a shake. Medium large combo. He lost a lot of weight because of his stanky leg. <laughs> but he's also getting arrested. I go into the house. Everything's peaceful and calm. A few minutes later, I go outside to check the mail. What's in the mail? But a letter from the court. And it's my final divorce decree. Part 48, I had called the car company. So they do take him away eventually. He goes with like little effort. He just a little fight, nothing much. He can't really say anything. And on that same day, she gets granted her divorce filings and she is, she's doing good. She has her stuff. I called the car company once before um, when he went. As a little F you to him, she calls the car company that has his Ford thing that he was driving. And she found out like ages ago while they were married that he hadn't finished making payments on the car. And so she calls them 
them and they say the payments are hell like really well overdue and stuff and she's like well, why don't you just take the car and then they repossess it so she gets a little bit of revenge in it. missing for those two weeks um the car payment was not being made on that car told them i understand that y'all are looking for this for a tourist and the lady said, yes, you know, or you can make a payment. I said, no, y'all can come get it. The car was repossessed out of my driveway. He only got out with keys to a car he no longer had, a wallet with probably no money in it, and the clothes that were on his back. So when the police arrested him, yes, it was a valid arrest, but the warrant had expired when I so I looked this up because I thought that sounded like it's not a thing sure enough it wasn't a thing so I'm as confused as everyone else is here there is no statute on limitations on a warrant imagine if there was like OJ is like ooh I killed him and then he like moves to Panama 10 years later he's like you can't arrest me I did it I did it I did it just like going around the streets just shoving it in people's faces that's crazy R. Kelly would be out of here R. Kelly would be in China right now singing ignition in Chinese if he knew that there was a fucking statute on limitations for a warrant why would anyone stay in the country if that was a thing? I don't know. Maybe maybe there was something that I'm overlooking, but apparently the warrant was overlooked and they had to release this man. I moved out of that house on August 31st. I started over. Part 49, 2021. In the end of August, she starts over. And basically that lasts from when they met, I think in March or Feb to August the next year. So it's a year and a bit of that relationship. One was the worst year I ever had. Fast forward all this time, get to December of 2021. I get a phone call from my coworker telling me that Legion has called our job looking for me. My friend Tracy was like, okay, here's what you're going to do. She said, you're going to send him a message and you are going to say the- So in 2021, after the arrest, everything, time has cooled off. She's moved houses, moved to a different part of town, moved everything with her life, moved on. And she gets a phone call by him. And her friend advises her to say, Step off, bro. I have nothing that belongs to you. I will get a restraining order on you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the last time I had any contact whatsoever with my pathologically lying ex-husband. Part 50, so the aftermath. Woo! Good stuff, lady, good stuff. Legion never loved me. He didn't even like me. Imagine if he had just been honest and said, hey, I, don't, I, I like in my free time to go to open houses and just see how the other people live. There's a level of cruelty. So in part 50, we have like sort of a summation of everything that's happened and basically her final thoughts on the matter. She does it seemingly from underwater because I don't know why it's so muffled. To my ex-husband that I had never experienced before. Being single sucks. Being married to the wrong person is a type of hell. That's what we learned from 50 parts of her explaining that she got married to one of the craziest people. Being single sucks. It is what it is. I mean, I got married to this guy, but I'd rather do that than be single like you peons. No one should have to go through. I wanted it to be my turn. And yes, I will one day get to London. I will get my dark blue BMW X5 with a cognac interior. Thank you all for being on the playlist of who the fuck did I marry? Thank you for watching. And we have just watched 50 parts, seven hours, 30 minutes condensed. Congratulations, you made it this far. Let's do a few closing thoughts and then I just wanna show you the dude's face. I wanna start with her motives. There's like a saying, there's three sides to every story. Like it's her truth, his truth, and then the actual truth. And with her motives, thing that I can see clearly is that he was financially being responsible for her and she even admitted she found that enticing. And the other thing is that she didn't wanna be alone and wanted to get married. She, at the end of the series, said that being married to someone who you don't love is a hell that is way worse than being single. Which <laughs> is like, wow, that's really sad to single people. They're just existing. Stop. I'm sure everyone wants to find their part, but it's not gonna be easy because if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth having, right? So sometimes you're gonna make mistakes. Sometimes you're gonna find people you don't love and that'll get you closer to who you do. But the important thing is to not compromise your values. Yes, you wanna be married, but not to the wrong person. And if you do get married to the wrong person, something like this happens. So it's okay to wait. It's okay to try and be financially responsible for yourself. Even if someone says, I wanna do it for you, it's still good to have a little bit of 
of yourself so that if someone pulls away, they're not pulling the rug and everything that comes with it. I think her motives were pretty clear. The guy offered her security, financial freedom, and promised to dedicate himself to her, which were all lies. It's not her fault for doing it, but it is something that she probably should have seen the signs. In his truth and his uh, lies, like I said, I think the craziest thing that I heard was in one of the final parts when she said he had a twin who was everything that he wasn't. And I think that would be maybe something that he has struggled to live up to. I don't know if his family had ever made him feel like he was inadequate. I don't know if any of that even was a thing. Maybe he could have had a great life, still thought, ah, I'm just gonna lie and pretend to be my brother. But what is clear is that he was lying about all the things that his twin brother was. So there's gotta be some deep down connection between him looking at someone who looks exactly like him and seeing what his life could have been and what his life is and completely being hooked in the fantasy of being someone he isn't. It's that imposter syndrome maybe. I'm not a psychologist, I'm a dude with a damn mic, so I can't tell you, but I think that there definitely needs to be something to help him because there there seems to be something clearly wrong. And if you can say it's a pattern because now he has three ex-wife, he's like Ross from Friends and that guy doesn't really exist. So that's bad when you're being compared to Ross from Friends about marriage. You gotta fix that. I think that he needs genuine help and then I think that I'm happy that she's moved on and I think I'm like, you know, by her telling the story, she managed to vent to it, managed to get it off her chest people who might be in the same similar situation however uncommon this is will actually be like oh, okay maybe this is what it is and so she's done a lot by doing this so i appreciate her and there's only one thing left to do see what legion looks like he did have a tiktok it's all been since deleted but on youtube and a few other places there are places to see it and i found two tiktoks as well as a channel called simply wavy that has a two-hour interview with him so if you want to see what he has to say do watch that it's a great interview there is not Nothing that I've learned from that, and he just seems to be lying there. Just run them off. Let me explain something to y'all. Stop thinking that somebody that gotta have a whole lot of money, a whole lot of this, a whole lot of that, a whole lot of this, a whole lot of gang shit, whatever the hell you want to say, that they gotta have. That's a legion. I can tell there's something wrong by the fact that he has earphones with wires in them in the year 2024. There's something wrong. Clearly, that's not okay. Have all this for you to get with them, women. You guys are the main offenders, guys. Same difference because the fact is, everybody comes with a story and everybody comes with something. You know what I'm saying? Everybody no, I don't actually know anything that what he's saying, but he says my story will be told stay patient Y'all money ain't anything it sounds like this is an issue or have whatever But if a person got a job and they working and they getting to work on the bus It don't matter. They ain't got a car if they ain't making that kind of money But they got a car, but they ain't living that high life But they living life good enough stop doing all that because the end of the day when money fades This sounds like a AI rap battle with himself. What the fuck everybody can't have whatever. What does that even mean? The heart stays I told you that first. He dropped in bar. At the end of the day when money fade, the heart stays. Mm, 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 mm. Parade with the gays, I like them too. Uh, ooh, uh, 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 I just got a flu. For real, stop all that foolishness. I'm out. No, for real, stop all that fool. He, f he lying in the own TikTok. He said, I'm out. And I was like, dude, there's 20 seconds more. You, cl you can't be out. And he's back. He lying in a TikTok. I can tell this man's a liar. Y'all still here? Get out of here. Go to work, for real. You're still here, bro. You go to work. Really? Come on, guys. What? I'm, you can put, you just have earphones with, you look like a doctor. What are you doing? Hey, this like, this is be like my mom and dad's jam. Yo. Uh, there's only one more. Legion sues and he hits on woman. And then it says, POV, me on my way to file that defamation case on these ladies, slander in my name. The, yeah, she did fucking lie about you being... This... What the hell, man? Legion's wearing glasses. He looks like a dad and from 2004, man. You from North Town, PA, stand up. <laughs> Y'all know all our parents used to play this junk back in the day. That's the only two TikToks that I seem to have found off this man. And I think it proves everything I need to in this case. I hope that there's some light. Like I, I would love to revisit this and see if he does get help or if this is actually a problem that's deeper than just I want to lie because I can, because that's very interesting. But um, at the end of the day, after this long, long deep dive, I think we all know something. If someone starts lying and you catch them, don't keep going down the rabbit hole for one year. Because if you do, a brown man from the other side of the world will have to watch all of them. And you don't want to hurt people like that because it's very heartbreaking. I stood here way too long. Thank you for watching the series. Bye, take care. I'll see you on the next deep dive TikTok.
whatever. Y'all still here? Get out of here. <laughs>